keeps producing excellent alumnus nationally and internationally, while also contributing in the development of knowledge, technology, art, culture and exercise. continuously improving the supporting aspect such as regulation, facilities, financial system, bureaucracy management, information system, as well as quality of human resources, quality escalation of three Dharma Perguanting is the primary target of UNI by stimulating the downstream of research outcomes that can be beneficially implemented for the society. We are also keen to improve the quantity of national and international academic publication, as well as the number of doctorates and professors in Diponegoro University. Now, Diponegoro University has been improving in two important aspects of achievement institutionally and student achievement. Diponegoro University has become a world-class university by being ranked fifth amongst almost 5,000 universities in Indonesia. Meanwhile, the students' achievement in both national and international scales of prestigious events are increasing. vision to be an imminent research university is supported by the continued increase of research funding. The total research and civil service funding in 2018 is 123.7 billion rupiah. It consists of PMVP, the National Competition Research Funding and Collaboration Research Funding. The intellectual property right becomes the indicator of significantly improved research. The patent consists of simple patent, patent, international patent, software and invention legal letter. To support the academic process, Diponegoro University has been improving the student facilities. Thus, the students will not only get the knowledge but also the actualization space. Diponegoro University has built a central computerized system that includes the service for the online study plan and online registration.
diskusi di undip yang sportif dan konstruktif memacu saya untuk terus berprestasi dalam akademik maupun non akademik. Didukung dengan fasilitas umum dan keakademikan yang lengkap. Sehingga membawa undip masuk 10 besar universitas terbaik di Indonesia. Undip berada di daerah beragam budaya yang harmonis. Yang pastinya undip lebih baik. Undip lebih baik. Bagaimanapun, undip pasti lebih baik. Ponegoro University has been moving ahead to be the best university in Indonesia by providing 13 faculties of undergraduate and postgraduate. The Ponegoro University has graduated 300,000 qualified alumnus. The Ponegoro University also establishes vocational schools to generate a ready-to-work alumnus. Holding the fighting values of Pangaran di Ponegoro such as honest, brave, fair and attentive, the Ponegoro University keeps producing excellent alumnus nationally and internationally while also contributing in the development of knowledge, technology, art, culture and exercise. We have planned to become one of university in 500 world university rank. We have been uh, continuously improving the supporting aspect such as regulation, facilities, financial system, bureaucracy management, information system, as well as quality of human resources. Quality escalation of three Dharma Parbanti is the primary target of UNI by stimulating the downstream of research outcomes that can be beneficially implemented for the society. We are also keen to improve the quantity of national and international academic publications, as well as the number of doctorates and professors in Diponegoro University. Now, Diponegoro University has been improving in two important aspects of achievement, institutionally and student achievement. Diponegoro University has become a world-class university by being ranked fifth amongst almost 5,000 universities in Indonesia. Meanwhile, the students' achievement in both national and international scales of prestigious events are increasing. The vision to be an imminent research university is supported by the continued increase of research funding. The total research and civil service funding in 2018 is 123.7 billion rupiah. It consists of PNBP, the National Competition Research Funding, and Collaboration Research Funding. <music> the 
the intellectual property right becomes the indicator of significantly improved research. The patent consists of simple patent, patent, legal letter. To support the academic process, Diponagora University has been improving the student facilities. That the students will not only get Ladies and gentlemen, in five minutes, we will begin the event. You may now take a seat. Please rename the name according to the rules. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. All praise and thanks to God, the Lord of the universe, the master and creator of everything in this universe, for his mercy and blessings in allowing us to meet and assemble this morning without any difficulties or barriers. Ladies and gentlemen, 
I would like to send one greeting to all of you who are attending our major event, the second international conference on chemical engineering and applied science on November 4, 2021. I am Zahra Nujianati Corina here. Being a master of ceremony in this program is a lovely and precious opportunity for me. Let us pray together before we begin this event. May God will make this event beneficial to all of us and that it will run smoothly and efficiently. Start praying. Finished. We have several agendas on this special morning. So please allow me to read several sequences of our agendas. First, registration. Second, opening. Third, speakers from first and second keynote. First, sharing session. Five, lunch break. Six, presentation. Third, ideas. Seven, parallel session two. And the last is closing. Now let's move on to the keynote speaker sessions. Keynote speakers are Professor Tony Hadi Barata from Curtin University, Malaysia, as the first keynote speaker, and Professor Abar Murmusim from Shahkuala University, Indonesia, as the second keynote speaker. In this session, we'll be leading by Mrs. Anggun Pospitarini Siswanto. Please extend a warm welcome to the moderator. Mrs. Anggun Pospitarini Siswanto graduated from Sheffield University, United Kingdom and Diponegoro University, and now she is a lecturer in vocational school Diponegoro University. To Mrs. Anggun Puspitari Mrs. Wanto, from whom the time has been allowed. Check, check. Okay, thank you, MC. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to the second day of our ICAS. Uh, it is a great honor for me to be the moderator for your uh, second session. Uh, sorry, the, the first session in the second day. Uh, who will... If... from Professor Tony of the speaker. I'll the screen to be appeared. Has it uh, so, ladies and gentlemen, Associate Professor Tony Hadibarata of Engineering and Science, Curtin University, Malaysia, is also and the program coordinator of Master of Sustainable. been having many achievements and uh, as to to have his speech coming soon is 28 and uh, he has been granted research funding Occasions, uh, operator, can you please help for the uh, article, the abstract? The abstract for the presentation? Ah, okay. So, ladies and gentlemen, uh, Associate Professor Tony Hadi Balata will be presenting the article with the title Prospecting uh, IKs producing fungi from national parks of Sarawak for biotransformation of emerging pollutants. So, Associate Professor Tony Hadibarata, are you here already? Yes, moderator. All right, thank you very much. Time is yours, please. Okay, let me share. 
Can you see my screen? Uh, yes, from me. It's clear. Yeah. Okay. Uh, we start. Thank you very much, moderator, for the time. So, uh, I am Tony from Curtin University of Malaysia. Now, I will uh, share my research about the prospecting lactase production fungi from national parks of Sarawak for biotransformations of emerging uh, pollutants. This is the background. So for your information, uh, Malaysia, uh, the water reserve for Malaysia is from the 566 billion cubic meter from the river, the surface water. Only 64 billion uh, cubic meter from the groundwater. But in Malaysia, we don't use the groundwater. We prefer use the surface water because there's plenty of surface water available in, in Malaysia, especially in Sarawak. And according to the data from 2013, uh, still have a polluted river and slightly polluted river. Yeah? Uh, we have here the data from 2013, uh, from 56 until 49, yeah? uh, decreasing for the slightly polluted and for the polluted uh, still remaining up and down, 10, 12, and then back to 10 again. And from investigations, the source of the pollution is from the point source as well as the non-point source. Yeah? From point source, there is a sewage treatment plants, uh, manufacturing, agro-based industries, and animal farms. From non-point source, there is uh, agricultural activity and plantations. Plantations because we are using the herbicides, uh, pesticides. Yeah? So it is one kind of the, uh, uh, contamination. And this is the situation of the wastewater treatment uh, uh, plant in Malaysia. Uh, a lot of wastewater treatment plants still using the conventional methods, yeah, uh, and also uh, high operation and maintenance costs. You can see this is the example. The treatment system here only effective on the conventional water quality parameters such as the BOD, yeah, uh, COD, uh, TSS, uh, TDS, and so on. But inefficient to remove the emerging pollutants. Yeah? You can see here there is uh, the removal. Yeah? The removals only 6.3% until 19.5%. Uh, yeah? So low if we compare with other uh, method. So the, what is the emerging pollutants? Emerging, emerging pollutant is the, the pollutants, actually the pollutant is already in the environment, but there is no regulations, yeah? no regulation. So in Malaysia, we have a regulation about the heavy metals, about the DSS, COD, BOD, but still uh, no uh, regulations for the emerging pollutants. What is the limits of every uh, pollutant in the environment as well as in the drinking waters? So this is the example. There is a pesticide, yeah, dioxins, uh, and also the flame retardants, the phenols, the PCB, uh, polyproline dipenyls, uh, estrogens, and the pH. In this research, I will uh, try to share about the pH uh, degradations uh, using uh, fungi, especially the enzymes producing from uh, fungi to degrade the pH. Three uh, pollutants uh, will be degraded in this research. Yeah? Uh, three rings and four rings. Yeah? Uh, uh, three rings pH, we categorize as the low molecular weight pH, and uh, four rings and above, uh, categorized, is, categorized uh, as the high molecular weight pH. Ah, the Malaysia has the green technology uh, master plan. We have, uh, six sector uh, here, waste, the constructions, uh, the energy, industry, and transportation, as well as the water. Yeah? For waters, there is uh, some approach, yeah? uh, such as the integrated river basin management, the water treatment, uh, water utilizations, water harvesting, yeah? and wastewater treatment and technology. For water sectors, there is uh, preventive and curative. So in these uh, two uh, categories, uh, I try to contribute in the curative, uh, especially for bioremediations. Uh, using the effective microbes. Yeah. And our project is aligned uh, with the uh, 
sustainable development goals of United Nations, especially for the goal number six, yeah, clean water and sanitation. So our projects propose uh, environmentally friendly approach yeah, that improve water quality uh, by reducing pollu pollution, eliminating dumpings, minimizing release of hazardous chemicals and materials, and targeting safe and affordable drinking waters for all by 2030. And the goal number 14 is uh, life below waters uh, to prevent the realizing the emerging contaminants into the aquatic environments caused by the ineffective water and wastewater uh, treatment plan. Okay, this is from the beginnings. Uh, the situation of the biodiversity uh, in Southeast Asia. As we know that uh, Southeast Asia, yeah, we have a tropical, uh, we have the highest biodiversity in all regions, especially forests. Yeah? We have the evergreen, evergreen rainforest, the tropical peat swamp forest, uh, lowland forest. Yeah? And uh, this forest uh, can be uh, western utilized for the productions, the production of the woods, plywood, plumber, yeah? plumbing, uh, as well as the uh, protections, uh, conservation, and recreation, and this category uh, can be can be found in the national park. Yeah? And the big issue now is the this deforestation. Uh, according to the data here, the deforestation from 2000, uh, 2001 until 2016, uh, yes, uh, drastically increased. Yeah, we can see. Uh, on 2001, uh, only around 12,000 uh, square kilometers. Yeah? But in the 2016, more than 40,000 uh, kilometers. So this is the big problem. Yeah? So because of that, we have to uh, monitor or mappings uh, the biodiversity except the, the, wood, the wood product. The Malaysia, Malaysia has uh, two uh, region, yeah, the West Malaysia and East Malaysia. East Malaysia, there is a Sarawak and Sabah, and Sarawak is 30% of Malaysia area. Yeah. In Sarawak, the, uh, there is uh, 30 national parks, uh, four wildlife and 10 uh, nature reserves. Yeah. However, wildlife sanctuary were not exposed. Yeah. Uh, to the public to protect endangered wildlife and vulnerable ecosystem. So we are focusing in this uh, area. Uh, so we try to uh, explore the non-forest product uh, such as uh, the essential oil, the fruits, vegetable, as well as the mushroom. The mushroom. So the mushrooms, uh, utilization of mushrooms in biotechnology energy can be seen in this figure. Yeah? Uh, first, for pulp paper and textile industry, yeah, as we know that the pulp paper uh, industry using the craft uh, method, yeah, craft methods using the sulfates chemicals and producing the the brown pulp, yeah, brown pulp, so need to be a bleach again using the chlorine. So if we can use the uh, microbes of fungi, uh, we can utilize the cellulose enzymes and silenes enzymes yeah, to degrade the wood components to become pumps. Yeah. It's more eco-friendly because there is no, uh, what is that? Uh, no, buy, no hazardous by product. The second one is the food industry and animal feeds. Yeah. We can use the amylase and protease for uh, brewings and dairy productions. For the biofuels and biocatalysts, we can use the cellulose yeah, to power fermentations to convert the carbohydrates into the ethanols yeah, uh, as the bioethanols. And finally, for environmental maintenance, we can use uh, various enzymes such as the lactase, uh, phenol oxidase, lipases, uh, peroxidase, and peptases. So I will explain these uh, enzymes uh, in the following set. Uh, this is why we have to focus on the fungi. This is the fungi situation, the fungi category, uh, the category of fungi. There are three types, white root fungi, uh, brown roots, and soft root fungi. The white roots uh, basically break down the lignins in the wood, yeah? lignin in the wood. So there is three components in the woods, uh, lignin, cellulose, and hemicellulose. Uh, cellulose is the, the, the striped fiber, Hemicellulose is branch fiber, and lignin is the like uh, the, the glue, yeah, the glue that binding all of the uh, other both, both components. So the target of white root fungi is break down the lignins, and then uh, uh, what's that? 
uh, only the cellulose and hemicellulose remaining. So because of that, if we can, if we see the wood, uh, decay woods, the color of decay wood is white. So this is the role of the white root fungi. Uh, the second one is brown root fungi. Uh, this fungi break down the hemicellulose and cellulose. Yeah, uh, we can see the picture here, the, making the, the decay wood become brown color, as well as the soft uh, root. Yeah. So in this uh, fungi, yeah, this three fungi, so they can degrade the lignin, yeah, lignins here, lignins, and then it becomes uh, only fiber or cellulose remaining. Why we have to focus in this uh, wood decay fungi? Because the wood component, yeah, especially the lignin, the structure we can see here, the structure containing the benzene ring. Yeah. This is the three. Uh, component of uh, lignin, yeah. We have the uh, coniferal alcohol, sinapyl alcohol, and comaryl alcohol. All of them containing uh, what's that? The benzene, yeah, benzene ring. So we we assume that uh, if the fungi can degrade the wood component, especially lignin, so the fungi can degrade the other uh, structure or other chemical structure, other pollutant structure, such as the pH. As we know, the pH. Uh, has the benzene ring, yeah? benzene rings, uh, minimum two benzene rings. So we assume that degrade uh, lignin can degrade the uh, pH. <clears throat> okay, this is the uh, the concept yeah, of the degradation. So the the fungi will produce the extracellular enzyme, enzymes. Yeah? Extracellular enzymes will uh, attach for the uh, to the surface of the uh, polymers, and then the poly depolymerizes the polymerization will happen, will be will happen, yeah, uh, to break down the polymer structure and then become the biofragmentations into the micromere and finally become the monomer. And the monomer will be assimilated into the fungal body, yeah, fungal body and the intracellular enzymes can consume it, the monomers, and uh, making the microbial biomass, energy microbial biomass, and finally to be the uh, was that uh, CO2 and H2O? Yeah. So in this degradation process, the there is the target. Yeah. The, the theory there is no uh, hazardous metabolites or byproducts because the final product is CO2 and H2O. And this is the enzymes. Uh, six enzyme produced by mushrooms or fungi. Yeah. We are focusing on the three enzyme here: oxidoreductase, transferase. Uh, and uh, <coughs> for the oxidoreductase, there is uh, oxygenase, uh, peroxidase, and lacase. Yeah, this is the most uh, common enzyme produced by uh, fungi for uh, berry medicines. Uh, this is the concept. Yeah, the, in the oxidoreductase, there is three uh, most important enzymes: the lignin peroxidase, lacase, and manganese peroxidase. Uh, the Mechanisms of the lignin degradation for the lignin peroxidase will convert the lignin into the cation radical yeah, here. For the lacase, uh, become the penoxy radical using the oxygens. But for the manganese peroxidase, become the penoxy radicals uh, using the peroxidase and the ion of manganese. And lacase itself, yeah, can uh, there is two. Oxidations, oxidations that can be uh, can be uh, conducted by the lacase. First, the direct oxidations, yeah, direct oxidations, and the indirect oxidation. In direct oxidations, yeah, the lacase will be oxidized into the oxidized lacase, yeah, uh, and then uh, this oxidized lacase will oxidize the substrates, yeah, will oxidize the substrates. To become more simply or uh, more open the the, the 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 bond of the structure, yeah, open. yeah, this is the oxidized sub, uh, substrate. For the second one, in indirect uh, oxidations, the oxidized lacase will uh, convert the mediators into the oxidized mediator, and the media the oxidized mediator will convert the substrates into uh, oxidized uh, substrates. Yeah. This is the two mechanisms that can be performed by the uh, lacase. Okay, now 
uh, we are trying to isolate the mushrooms. Yeah, uh, I have uh, collect some uh, sample from uh, five national park. Yeah, Baku, Nia, Simalaju, Lambir, yeah? and uh, uh, Piasau. Uh, from this national park, I collect the, the fungal body, the mushroom body, and also the decayed woods, and also the fungi from the, the soils, uh, the the, uh, the woods, as well as from the leaf. Yeah. So I collect around 804 Basidia vegetas, or the white root fungi. Yeah? And I isolate the fungi, and then culturings. Yeah? And then a selections uh, can be conducted using the indicator. The indicator. So I use three indicators: Poly R four seven H, RBBR, Remazol Brilliant Blue R, uh, Goya Call, and Single Desin. Yeah? So if the fungi can react with the, the indicators, so we can assume that the fungi has uh, targeted enzymes. Yeah? Yeah? So the and then we can identify the fungi uh, using the microscopic and microscope. This is the uh, selected isolate, yeah. 29 isolates can be uh, isolate, uh, selected screens from 800 something. Yeah. So only, you can see here, yeah, uh, there is a reaction category. Yeah. So plus, one plus is the if reaction less than 30, uh, two plus is 30 until 60, uh, three plus 60 until 90, and uh, more than 90% is uh, four plus. So only for uh, three fungi uh, from 29 isolates, only three fungi showing four uh, or reactions more than 90% uh, in four indicator, yeah? in four indicator, yeah? BM172, BM745, and BM792. Yeah? Two of them is the saprophytics and one is uh, parasitics. And then we can identify uh, the fungi using the microscopic, yeah, by observing, touching, smelling, uh, testing, and also the microscopics, the size and shape of the spore, as well as the arrangements of the spore. And finally, uh, check with the molecular identifications using the sequencing of PCR modified by the 18 RNA genes with the universal uh, primers. Uh, this is after identification. So BM1. 72 uh, is the Coriolopsis caperata. Yeah. The BM745 is the Fomes fermentarius, and BM792 is the Pleutus fusopius. So we can see uh, two uh, BM1172 and uh, 745 categorized in the family of the Polyporaceae. This is quite strong or common uh, family for remediation of pollutant. I have a lot of mushrooms uh, that categorize in this uh, family. Okay, after that, uh, we uh, into the batch study. Uh, uh, first, media preparations. Media preparations, we prepare the malt extracts, uh, as well as the carbon source and nitrogen source, and then culturing in the uh, clean bands, yeah? and then incubations. incubations. Then we uh, separate uh, one of the one for the enzymes analysis and one for the uh, degradation as well as the transformation. <laughs> for the enzymes, so after incubation, enzyme will be uh, produced, yeah, is produced, and then we spread and check the the activity using the UV fish uh, at the 420 nanometer. This is for like case, yeah, because we are targeting on like case. So this is the like case. Uh, buffer, the ABTS, uh, and then the sodium acetate buffer. Okay. Then for for the degradations after incubations, the sample will be extracted using the uh, liquid liquid extractions, yeah. and then the uh, what's that the evaporations and check the mass spectrums using the GCMS. So for identification, we check. The sample, yeah, we compare the sample with the standard. If we have standard, we compare with standard compounds. If we don't have the standard, we can use the synthesized compounds. Yeah, we, we try to synthesize the, from the available uh, compound in the labs. 
And also we compare with the library. Yeah, library means the, the JC MS. There is a library there, so we can compare our sample with the library as well as the standard and synthesis. Okay, so this is the the mechanism. Yeah, so the fungi here. The mycelia of the fungi will produce the enzyme, yeah, especially the extra cellular enzymes, and they will uh, attack the pollutant. Yeah, will attack the pollutant. Yeah, and the pollutant will be the will be transformed into the simple or uh, simple pollutant. So it means the simple structure pollutant or oxidized pollutant. And after that, sometimes there is a biosubstance. Yeah, the pollutant the adsorb absorb into the, the fungal body yeah? and the mechanisms of transformation will uh, occur there yeah? in the inside the fungal body. And then the, the degradation and the metabolites will be checked uh, by the UV, yeah? UV absorbance. And so the melting points, the TLC to know the uh, RF value, yeah? RF value and as well the GCMS and FTIR. But uh, if you don't have GCMS, you can check with the, the FDR only or TLC or UV. Yeah. So GCMS the, is the ultimate uh, step instruments to check the, the compounds. So the target here is the uh, anthracins, yeah. three rings, three benzene rings, strike three ring benzene rings, penantrins, and the pyrins. Yeah. Three rings and four rings. So increase the rings, increase the toxicity, and increase the uh, persistency. Okay, this is the result. Yeah, So we can see here the effect of the carbon source on the like, case production, yeah? uh, three from the three uh, fungi. Yeah? You can see that the uh, highest of activity of like case yeah? is for the BM172 is three, uh, 1,352 unit per liter. Yeah? As well as the other uh, fungi, yeah, around more than 1,000 unit per liter. So we can conclude that the addition of sugarcane, yeah, sugarcane uh, increasing the production of uh, lacase, yeah, increasing production of lacase. Uh, because the sugarcane containing the rich, important mineral, yeah, such as the calcium, magnesium, uh, potassium, yeah, as well as the other. Uh, heavy metals. So this heavy metals, especially copper, yeah, copper will improve the, uh, the 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 ability of fungi to produce the lacase. And this is the nitrogen source yeah, on the lacase production. So since with the carbon source, uh, the activity of lacase can be achieved more than the one thousand unit per liter. But for the BM172 and 792, uh, the pattern is the fit nitrogen source. Yeah? For the another fungi, another fungi, this extract is the, the, the appropriate uh, nitrogens. For the peptons, uh, yeah, the reason is because uh, this uh, nitrogen source obtained by the enzymatic digestion or acid hydrolysis. And for the yeast extracts uh, containing the uh, protein contents more than uh, fifty percent, yeah, the consisting uh, glutathione as well as the nucleic acid, so increasing the production of lactase by the fungi. For degradations, yeah, we can see uh, three fungi uh, degrade the pollutants, yeah. Uh, the penantrans, anthracene, and pyrins more than 60 percent. Yeah, more than 60 percent. But we have to check it is the bio substance or biotransmission. So, bio substance, so we just the, the fungi just absorb the pollutants, yeah, the pollutants. But the characteristic of the pollutants still same, it's remaining same. The structure same, still anthracene, penantrin, and pyrin. The biotransformations, yeah, this is our target. So, the pollutant will be uh, will be uh, converted, yeah, converted to other. Uh, simple uh, structure, simple stuff. Okay, this is the result. Yeah, from uh, three pH yeah, for penantrans, penantrans, we can produce our metabolite is depending acid, one hydroxy to nitric acid, catechol and salicylic acid. Yeah, salicylic acid. 
So four metabolites can be produced by the uh, fungi. Uh, comparing the mass spectra sample with the uh, library or the standard or the synthesized compound, as well as the anthracins. Yeah, anthracins uh, can be converted into the anthraquinones and the benzoic acid. And pyrins uh, become the talic acids, uh, one hydroxytonic acid and salicylic acid. This compound, yeah, still toxic, but the toxicity is much lesser compared with the, the parent compound. Yeah? The parent compound. Okay. This is the pathway of uh, penantrins. Yeah? Pathway of the penantrins. Here, the penantrins. Uh, there is a B region and the K region. So the degradations or the oxidation will be uh, occur in this area, yeah? B regions or K region. So here we can see that theoretically penantrin will be converted to the 910 dihydroxy penantrins, uh, penantrin dions, and uh, depending acid. But here we cannot find these two compounds, yeah? the two compounds in brackets, meaning we cannot find this compound. But theoretically, the penantrin will be converted into this two compound. But we can find, we can find this one, yeah, the depending acid, yeah, depending acids by opening this uh, K region, yeah, become carboxylic acid. And from the depending acids, converted into the one hydroxy two nitric acids, and then the two hydroxy benzoic acid, and catechol, yeah, catechol. Finally, it should be converted to TCA cycle, but uh, we just found the final product is the catechol, yeah, catechol. This is the anthracens. So in the like role, the anthracens will be converted into the uh, anthracene 9, 10, Dio, and uh, uh, anthracene quinone. Anthracene quinone yeah? So uh, we cannot find this compound, anthracene 9, 10, Dio, but we find we found this one, uh, anthracene quinone. For your information, the anthracene quinone structure is similar with the RBBR, yeah? the indicator, the Remazol Brilliant Duar. So basically, if the, the fungi can decolorize the RBBR, so can be degrade the, the anthracene as well as the anthracene quinone. From the anthracene quinone, there is a increases until to uh, converting conversion to the talic acid, yeah? talic acids, and then increase again to the benzoic acid. Yeah? But another concept also uh, using the dioxygenase, yeah? the, the hydroxygenase, this anthracene can be converted into the this area, yeah? one, two, uh, carbon number one and two, yeah? become anthracene one to the all and three hydroxy to nitrogen. But uh, we cannot find this one, yeah? these two, two, two compounds. But at the fungi, yeah? beside this fungi, we, we found this two compound. Okay, then the pyrene, yeah, four rings pH, uh, oxygenation to become the Penantren for five decarboxylic acids, but we cannot find. We just find the uh, one hydroxytonic acid, and then from this compound, uh, divided into two pathway, talic acid pathway and uh, salicylic acid pathway. So for the salicylic acid pathway, uh, it should be converted into the catechol, and final the TCA, decarboxylic acid. Mm -hmm. But we cannot find the catechol. This is the a pathway of the penantren, anthracene, and uh, pyrene. Yeah. So the problem is enzyme. Yeah? Enzymes cannot active in the environmental situation. Yeah? So we cannot implement the enzyme directly to the, to the field. Yeah? We need a, a carrier or matrix. Yeah? matrix. So this is three uh, immobilization technique. Yeah? This techniques is proposed to uh, provide high activity, so, so, so the, the activity of enzyme is still high, and also the high stability because the enzyme will will be impacted by the environmental conditions such as pH uh, and then the uh, what is that the temperature, the pressure. Yeah. So if the temperature increase, 
the activity of uh, enzyme will be uh, decreased and also stability will be decreased. Yeah? So we have to maintain that the enzyme's activity and the enzyme stability uh, remain or uh, increase, yeah? Still, uh, can be increased by the immobilization. So this is four methods. First is the cross-linking. Yeah? This is the, this method provides the strong catalyst binding and also decrease in the substance. But the problems, uh, the activity of enzymes decrease, yeah? decreasing, as well as the decreasing in diffusion rates. The covalent binding, covalent bindings uh, provide the strong bindings and high thermal stability. So we, uh, in terms of the high temperature, the enzyme activity is still, uh, still okay, still high. The problems uh, sometimes the activity increase, yeah? uh, stability increase, but the activity decrease. That's the problem. Yeah? And also the limitation of enzymes mobility. The third one, the absorption. Yeah? The absorption. This is the cheap, the simple and cheap one. Uh, no region in it, but the problems low stability and also weak binding. The fourth one, the entrapment and encapsulations. Yeah? Uh, increasing the or uh, protection of enzyme activity and as well as the continuous operations, but the limitations, low enzyme loading and limitation of uh, mass transfer. So the enzyme must be uh, immobilized before implement, implemented to the environment. So yeah, this is the technique. So because the, uh, I prefer the, the entrapment, yeah, because I have uh, one uh, projects, uh, entrapments of enzymes with the uh, absorbance yeah, from uh, active carbons and also addition of the uh, iron ions yeah, to become the magnetic field for the uh, for the enzyme. So we call it the magnesium uh, prototype. Okay, uh, conclusion of the presentations that the microbial degradations is effective alternative treatments for emerging pollutants if you compare with other method yeah because there is no uh, byproducts address byproduct the second one we can utilize the white roof fungi because this fungi is very efficient lignin uh, degraders yeah, in nature and also producing high concentration of lekase and the case can play a role in the transformations of emerging pollutant, especially pH. So we we don't just we just done the what's that removing yeah? the pollutants not removing from materials to other material, yeah, from water to other, for example, absorbents. Yeah, the characteristic of the pollutant is still the same. So this is uh, this is not good yeah, for the remediation. We have to. We have to degrade it. We have to destroy the structure of the pollutant. So the characteristic of the toxics and hazardous uh, of the pollutant will be uh, decreased. And finally, uh, to maintain the stability and activity, we have to uh, what's that? We have to immobilize the enzyme yeah, uh, before implementing to uh, performance. Yeah. This is for impact. So our projects will in, contributes in terms of the government contributes significantly to the Malaysian water efficiency yeah, uh, to ensure uh, safe water to achieve the flops national status yeah, for environments improve water quality by reducing pollution and minimizing a release of hazardous chemicals and materials for community uh, we hope we get the good accept acceptance because we don't have any negative effect of the human on human health yeah, because not producing uh, hazardous byproduct for academia yeah contributes significantly to the academy through the use of the new technology using the enzymes technology yeah, started from the microbes and for industry uh, we hope that we can uh, the, the products the prototype can be potentially commercialized especially to the drinking water provider and wastewater treatment industry this is the reference in this uh, presentation. Uh, thank you very much. 
Okay, thank you very much, Associate Professor Tony Hadibarata. I should say, Arigato gozaimasta. So, ladies and gentlemen, Associate Professor Tony Hadibarata was completing his uh, master and PhD in Ehime University, Japan. All right, so we are coming to the Q&A session for a couple of minutes, uh, 15 until 20 minutes. So please, uh, participants, anyone want to ask? So there are almost 200 people in this forum. Mm, looking forward to having the questions, please. Okay. Uh, Bapak Tony, may I call you Bapak Tony, please? Yes, please. Yeah, thank you. Uh, while we are waiting, uh, so anyone who wants to drop questions, feel free to do that uh, by uh, raising your hand or putting into the uh, chat box, okay? Right, so uh, Pak Tony, uh, in regards to your presentation, this is such a great research because, you know, uh, SDGs have become the emerging topics for everybody in the world, including um, those who are at the moment um, gathering in Glasgow for COP26. So uh, it, 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 it gave me an interesting thought about your research. Um, when you talk about the impact uh, given for the government as well, uh, is there any suggestion from your side uh, what we could suggest the government as the as the academia uh, to to combat this um, deforestation, for example, or to make the the world become greener? So please, Atami. Yes, uh, thank you for the questions for the uh, government. Yeah. Uh, deforestation so yeah we try to uh, because our target our production yeah, focusing on the wood, wood so we just using the woods from forest as the main production so we have to show or provide alternative uh, what's that alternative non-wood product that a lot of non-wood product can be uh, exploited yeah? For example, like mushrooms, mushroom we can, of course, we can eat the edible mushrooms, right? But uh, besides that, we have uh, also mushroom for uh, other purpose, other uh, purpose such as the biodegradation. Yeah? So we can, uh, what's that, uh, extract, yeah? extract the mushrooms to become the product, yeah, product. So, uh, of course, the I have a research. Yeah, I have research about the, this kind of uh, enzymes. Yeah, uh, like my previous uh, explanations, uh, we have uh, magnesium, yeah? magnet enzymes. So combination with the um, uh, enzymes with uh, uh, absorbance and uh, magnet. Yeah? So this product can be implemented in the nature in the environment. So yeah, uh, for yeah because we have to show as academia we have to. So to the government that the target of this means the product from forest, not only from wood, yeah? we have to show it. Because if we focusing on wood, then we will uh, cut the wood, right? Then the deforestation will be increasing. Increase. Yeah, I think that, <laughs> I don't know, this is answering your question or not, but yeah, it's my perception. Okay, thank you very much, Patoni. Uh, and in the chat box, so from Pak Idra, speak it by yourself, or should I read it? Okay, yeah, let me check. Yeah. Amri, do you want to speak with Pak Tony, please? Can you go much? Okay, then. Okay. Uh, yeah. In Ma actually, yeah, in Malaysia situation, we don't use the groundwater. Uh, yeah. The all of the drinking water is from the surface water. Surface water because we have 
plenty surface water river, especially in Sarawak. In Sarawak, we have a big river, yeah, as well as in Kalimantan. Yeah. Big river in Indonesia is from Kalimantan. Then, yeah, in Sarawak also we have a big river, so we don't have any difficulty to what's that to use the water from river. So we don't use the the groundwater. Yeah, but in Indonesia, yeah, a lot. I think yeah, we use the groundwater, right? The groundwater. So how the government to protect the groundwater? Yeah, we have to. Actually, this is not my special my specialty, but I try to answer, right? Yeah, I think we have to provide a lot of uh, what harvesting, yeah, rain, what rain harvesting system or in the in the rested soil yeah i think that's one of the method i forget the name yeah? the, but biopo biopori biopori that, that's yeah, biopori yeah that's mm -hmm. one of the uh, effective method i think yeah to uh, maintain the groundwater okay i think yeah i hope my answer <laughs> my answer can satisfy because this is not not my my master my 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 specialty the, Okay. Okay. Thank you very much, Pak Tony. How how is it, Pak Idral Amri from Unri? I'm really sorry. I don't know. Is this a gentleman or a lady? Gentleman, Asia. Uh, okay. Please. Yes. Uh, sorry. <laughs> please, Bapak Monggo. Yeah. Yeah. We have any problem about this? Uh, how to provide the water for the community, right? In Indonesia, uh, usually uh, the people take the water from the ground waters by the individually not um, not by not any control from the government so if you see the I don't, I don't, uh, i'm not sure jakarta the level or the land level of jakarta is uh, low uh, due to uh, uh, many people take water for the ground waters so maybe we need to suggest government how to uh, treat the rivers to produce the drinking waters or uh, other waters to our consumption. So this problem. So that's why I I put the question in the chat room. But uh, anyways, thank you, Pa Tony. Yes, yes. You're welcome. Okay, thank you very much. Or maybe in the future there could be um uh, collaborations in research between Pak Amri and Pak Tony. Who knows? Okay, thank you very much, Bapak-Bapak. Uh, Baik. Uh, next, um, any more questions? I'm really sorry, I'm mixing three languages at the moment, Indonesian, English, and Japanese. Uh, well, that's the um, local wisdom we, call, uh, we, we, we say. All right, so we have uh, Dr. Hermawan here raising the hand, please. Yeah, uh, operator, please help for the unmuting. Okay. Okay. Uh, thank you very much, much Mother. Good morning, uh, Pak Tony. Yes. Yeah. Okay. I'm interested in your uh, research topic regarding the immobilized uh, enzyme, like as uh, Can you explain more detail about the encapsulation or immobilized uh, like as enzyme in your research using the activated carbon? Or have you tried another material to encapsulate as the carrying material uh, to immobilize the like as enzyme uh, to increase the stability and the activity of enzyme? Thank you, Patoni. Yes, uh, yeah. Uh, there are four types of uh, method for mobilizations and of course the uh, covalent binding covalent binding this one yeah covalent binding is, actually this is the common the common the cheap one the absorptions but i propose using the entrapment yeah, entrapment because uh, i use the absorbent I, I never use other material because i i have another research uh, uh, to produce the activated carbon from agricultural waste so better I combine my previous uh, data and previous results 
with other results. So the enzymes, the lactase are produced from the fungi, and then the articulated carbons produced from the agricultural waste. And uh, the enzymes, the enzymes will be the core of the, 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 the this magnesium, yeah, magnesium product. And the activated carbon is the uh, is the is the, 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 the is the surface area as the absorbs the pollutant. So the pollutant will be absorbed by the activated carbons, and then when the uh, the pollutants uh, that absorb and then go to the insides of the materials, then the enzymes will transform, uh, transform or degrade. So we just we don't just uh, uh, absorb the pollutant. Yeah, for example, absorb the pollutant from water into the activated carbon. The pollutant still same. Yeah? The characteristic of the pollutant still same. The target is to degrade this pollutant. We have to destroy the structure yeah? by the enzymes. Only enzyme can destroy the structure of the uh, the, the, the pollutants without uh, any uh, hazardous uh, byproduct. Yeah? Because yeah, naturally the, the enzymes will oxidize, 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 oxidize until. Uh, until formation of the CO2 and H2O. Yeah, in the that's that's why I prefer using the entrapment. Yeah, uh, using the activated carbons, activated carbons, and then enzymes. And the core is the mag the magnet, the, the iron, the iron. Actually, the iron is optional. Optional. Yeah? If we uh, want to use the magnetic field, then we can input the irons as the core. Uh, of the materials, so the target, the target, the magnesium can be implemented on the surface of the ocean, yeah. Because as we know that the uh, oil, oil spill, oil always uh, covering surface of the water, yeah. Because the density is lower than water, then we can implement these magnesiums. Then we can remove it, this kind of magnesium from the, the surface of the water using the magnetic field. Yeah, it's more faster than we collect uh, manually. That's the, the, the concept. Uh, please help. Uh, Dr. Hermawan, do you want to say more things? Uh, please help the uh, okay, okay, thank you. Thank you, yeah. uh, thank you, Dr. Rani, for your uh, answer. But yes, yes, welcome. I really interesting whether you, you you mentioned the activated carbon and the magnetic uh, material, but is it possible if we change uh, the, the the material? I mean, like the the, the wall material to encapsulate or immobilize the like uh, enzyme. So, what the main factor uh, to choose the, the material for immobilize the like uh, enzyme in your research? Uh, for me, uh, the material must have high absorption yeah? high absorption capacity yeah high absorption capacity because the target the pollutant is will be converted by enzyme so the pollutant must be was that the uh, in traps in the absorbance then the the the, was that the enzymes will do the jobs yeah they do the real jobs so the absorbance will absorbs as many as possible the pollutants from the, the water. Yeah, that's the, 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 the criteria, high absor absorption uh, capacity. So if you have other material that uh, has the high absorption capacity, then it's possible, it's possible, because not on activated carbon, so you can use other, uh, other material, such as maybe allophane, maybe. Yeah. But I, I never try, I never try. I just try the uh, activated carbon. Thank you very much, Dr. Tony, for your yes, answer. Welcome. Yes, welcome. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Herma, Dr. Tony, and Dr. Uh, Amri. Uh, any more questions, please? Ladies and gentlemen, any more questions? <clears throat> Uh, okay, uh, if Dr. Tony allow me for giving one last question, please. Yes. Okay. Uh, yeah, thank you, Bapak. So uh, when 
you were explaining about the involvement of government uh, in your university. Uh, how how does it in uh, Curtin University Malaysia regarding the collaborations between government, industry, and academia? Uh, for the last few years uh, back, Indonesia has been implementing Pentahelix. So that's a collaboration between uh, four parties uh, involving the government, uh, so society, as well as the academia and industry. So how, how is the situation in your place? Yeah, uh, actually uh, in Malaysia, yeah, there, from the Ministry of Higher Education, there is uh, various type of grants. Yeah, for, for example, uh, there is a fundamental research grants. And then, uh, exploratory research grants uh, is no more, no more this type of grant and then the prototype of grants long term research grants uh, and also the commercialization grant so if we are new researcher we we have to do we have to apply the frgs uh, uh, fundamental research grant scheme yeah? fundamental after we have produced some data from fundamental research then we can apply for exploratory research grants or the prototype Yeah. So from the prototype, we produce prototype, of course, yeah. And this prototype must be uh, there is a link with the industry. We have to include a member from industry to to prove these prototypes can be uh, what's that can be utilized for the industry. So from the prototype, uh, this is We have the product prototype. Then we can implement. Uh, we can apply the uh, what's that name. Commercialization grant, yeah. Every I think every big university has the uh, commercialization grants. So, so from prototype, we can uh, what's that? Uh, make it the product, yeah. It means the commercialized product using the uh, commercialization grant. So from beginning until uh, commercialization, we have uh, various grants. So yeah, and F step in the prototype until commercial grants, we have to collaborate yeah, with the industry. For example, uh, uh, like uh, uh, one of the, my my grants about the uh, enzyme dispersants, uh, I include the water provider, uh, like PD, PDAM, PDAM like, uh, water provider in, in, in uh, Sarawak. So uh, this also, include with the government because the water provider is owned by the government yeah that's the the situation in in in, in Sarawak. excellent thank you very much uh bapa it, it doesn't seem uh too far away with the situations here so we will definitely um trying to put your insights into our situations here all right ladies and gentlemen we have one of Five more minutes before we are moving on to the next speaker. Please, any more questions on the chat box or raising the hand? No? All right. So uh, let me please say thank you very much for uh, Associate Professor uh, Tony Hadibarata. Uh, it has been a great pleasure to having your speech with us and uh, Before we are closing the session with you, uh, I believe that we are having a certificate. Okay, operator, please. Yes, thank you very much. Okay. Um, we are waiting for the um, loading for the certificate, Bapa. So sorry. Ah, okay. It's um, oh, we we are apologizing, uh, Bapa, for the technical error. Uh, it seems like the loading is uh, taking longer time. So once again, thank you very much, uh, yes, Associate very Professor. Much. Yeah, yeah, thank, thank you. you. Have a great day.
Okay, we are having few more minutes before having the next uh, speaker. Okay. Are again waiting for Professor Abdul Muslim. Love Muslim. Assalamualaikum. No, it, it's mute again. Okay. It's okay now. Good morning, Bapak. Hello. Good morning. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam okay. warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Okay. After yes, serious, finally. Yeah. <laughs> Alhamdulillah. Hopefully we can be uh, silaturahmi offline one day. Ya, Bapak? Alhamdulillah. Yeah, very, very great yeah. to see you. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you too. And Applied Science 2021. And now we are having a uh, Professor Dr. Abdar Muslim, uh, STMN. Uh, he is currently a professor in uh, Syekh Kuala University in Aceh, Indonesia, one of the, uh, the best place in Indonesia. Uh, Professor Muslim completed his um, PhD and master degree in Curtin University of Technology. Go down, go down, operator. Okay, and uh, he has been uh, writing a lot of publications and also research experiences and uh, research grants as well, both uh, national and international grants. So today, uh, Professor Muslim will be presenting the uh, paper uh, titled uh, Silicified Coal Absorbance for Adsorption of uh, CO2 from the Aqua Solution, Nonlinear Kinetic and uh, Isotherm Studies. So, uh, Professor Muslim, the time and floors is yours. The screen, I mean, I'm sorry, please. It's already on the screen. Uh, not yet from me. Ah, yes, it's here. Alhamdulillah. Yes. Alhamdulillah. Thank you, Bapak, please. Yeah, yeah. I will speak a lot like uh, uh, Associate Professor Tony when I was in Curtin University. My English is very fast, especially my uh, superpowers from India also. Very fast. It's like selling uh, drugs, you know. <laughs> Now I try to uh, deal from my uh, keynote speech slowly, inshallah. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala ali Muhammad. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. First of all, for the Muslim, uh, let us praise to uh, the Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because his blessing we can attend this conference. Yeah, able to attend virtually the ICCS 2020. The secondly, maybe um, upon our Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the last messenger who has brought mankind 
from the darkness of Jahiliya to the light of Islam. I would like to thank for the Dean of uh, Vocational School, the Pranagar University, uh, Professor Bodiana. Professor Bodiana here. My message here. Yeah. And the Honorable yeah, sure. uh, Hermawan PhD for the invitation of the speaker. And thank you, uh, Dr. Angun. Yeah, very intense. Yeah, last two years we have communication everywhere. <laughs> yes, exactly. Uh, we continue yes, our yes. Uh, collaboration. And all the participants for the time and place to me presenting my speech about solidified coal absorbent for absorption of copper to iron from the aqueous solution. Nonlinear and isotherm studies is more uh, technical uh, presentation. I'm sorry. Uh, to begin with, I, I'm just going uh, to give you a bit introduction. Okay, it doesn't move. Not yet from here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, hang on. It's okay now. Um. Okay, it's not. It's okay. Like here, anymore. like this. It's okay, like this. Uh, oh, you are not uh, sharing your screen anymore, right, Bapak? Hang on. Mm -hmm, okay. And okay, the, this please, is okay uh, like this. Reshare it. It's okay like this. A moment, please. It's okay like this. Okay. Mm, uh, yes, yes, we can see it now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it should oh. be fine, Prof. Mm -hmm. Should be fine, yeah. Inshallah. Yeah, should be fine. Inshallah. 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 All right. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> yes. And my, I, yes. I need to use my speaker also. Because uh, okay. problem with audio in the laptop. Okay, to ah, begin okay. with, I'm just going to give you a bit introduction and motivation on this topic. That heavy metal can pollute the land and water bodies, and even groundwater, and the source of mostly from domestic waste, laboratories, and agriculture. In general, industrial activity starts contribute to the biggest source of heavy metals waste, the pollutant, the pollutant of heavy metal. Iron can contaminate the environment, leading to negative impact on the environment and public health. Heavy metal can be accumulated in organism because these pollutants are non-biodegradable compound causing various illness on humans. Among others, heavy metals, iron, uh, the copper iron can come from industrial waste uh, containing uh, copper ions such as agro-industrial and chemical waste, petroleum and electrical mining and mining operation. These heavy metals are wide use and the capacity of mine plant is much higher than our non-iron uh, industry. Uh, copper iron especially is the most harmless heavy metal iron because its redox activities and iron mobilization in our body, it can cause some disease, including uh, cancer damaging on uh, human uh, tissues and organ. Copper iron in drinking water should be uh, meet uh, the regulation there yeah, to less than uh, 1.3 milligram per liter regulated by United States Environmental Protection Agency and concentration of copper ion in liquid waste, especially from natural everyone must be reduced to eliminate the copper ions Hazardous properties. All right, 
to handle water waste containing heavy metal ions. Uh, several techniques, uh, several techniques here yeah, have been proposed, such as membrane separation, ion extinct, chemical precipitation, coagulation, percolation, and flotation, and so on. And uh, assumption is the most simpler and effective technique according to some literature. So what actually assumption about? So many information available to understand this words we can search in internet. In short, I could say that uh, absorption is one of chemical process in uh, it is surface process what uh, that lead to transfer of a molecule called absorbent from a fluid or gas bar to solid surface called absorbent. This can occur because of physical force or by chemical bound. Um, then, so uh, various uh, uh, natural materials, yeah, natural materials have been proposed for absorption of heavy metals ions, including copper ions uh, such as bentonite, dactonite, rosonite, uh, and so on. Ball clay, you can search in internet. Natural zoolite, natural clay, and uh, silica uh, tailings, which all silica based absorbent. And other material here that can uh, that contain silica uh, uh, is stone coal. It's, it's called stone coal or stony coal or silicified coal. Here we can hear, see here from the picture uh, coal bearing sediment containing silicified coal with a barrier to coal steam. And actually, this uh, natural resource has no economic value. Uh, it's like waste in the mining of coal. However, this silicon with silicified coal has been not proposed. Uh, this is the point of our research here has been not proposed as a solvent uh, to removal of uh, copper to iron from a solution. Therefore, uh, the main objective of study here, yeah, firstly, to develop absorbent from an economic silicate coal. Uh, second, to categorize absorbent for silicate oil. So let's call uh, by uh, FTIR, ISRB, XRF, ICP, and same. And then we need to investigate the effect of independent variable on copper to iron absorption capacity by this adsorbent. And uh, to obtain uh, the parameters value of absorbent kinetic by a nonlinear model. Of the performance of absorption isotherm by nonlinear model, and uh, finally to obtain maximum equilibrium absorption capacity. So, this is the method I need to highlight the research gap. I have uh, experienced when I proposed my professor to uh, Indonesian government. So, almost all my paper is rejected. So I need to highlight the research gap clearly yeah, and then alhamdulillah by uh, read of Allah so finally I'm a professional so what the, the research gap here the, the free study uh, for copper uh, to iron absorption uh, related to natural material they use bentonite, deltonite and so on and natural light and silicon for coal has been proposed for uh, CO2 ion uh, absorption. And also the last um, um, uh, previous study, uh, uh, they don't use uh, an, uh, natrium oxide, natrium hydroxide active activator to activate uh, the surface of uh, absorbent. This is the uh, as uh, preparation, preparation 
you can hear here yeah this is the phone call or simplified call for, uh, firstly crash and email to powder and then sif uh, to be 180 to 200 mess and then dried using for a uh, prior yeah at uh, 105 degrees celsius for one hour and then we activate we activate it uh, using uh, right or side uh, from zero to 0.2 molar zero is mean that uh, no uh, natrium oxide uh, to be placed in uh, uh, accurate solution to activate the absorbent and then we filter it and then we actually here we wash we wash and we can and wash and we can up until the pH of the uh, remain water to be uh, natural uh, close to seven and then the assumption we use for assumption running uh, for the assumption is very simple what i can say is very simple i can do, i can uh, do it at home yeah uh, especially in this uh, COVID-19 pandemic uh, very easy to to conduct this research so in the session uh, test uh, we uh, applied uh, uh, independent variable like time uh, initial concentration of co2 uh, and the the various of the type of the sorbent uh, assigned from zero to six uh, 80 minutes uh, from 60 minutes uh, zero to 60 minutes and uh, concentration initial concentration of the uh, copper ion in solution from five to 200 milligram per liter and after the absorption uh, finish yeah uh, we we take sample we take sample about two milliliters yeah two millimeters uh, uh, also we take sample in series also in series uh, uh, a certain time, like 15 minutes, 30 minutes, 45 minutes, 60 minutes. Uh, and then uh, and finally, we uh, take uh, all the sample and dilute uh, in um, aqueous solution, in aqueous solution. And then uh, we, we uh, calculate uh, the con real concentration by multiplying the uh, dilution factor. Uh, using the AAS, yeah, we uh, analyze the concentration in the remain uh, uh, solution uh, after uh, absorption and within the time for sampling. Um, all right, we move on in the result. Uh, as I introduced before, there's uh, uh, the firstly, we need to characterize characterize the uh, absorbent. Yeah, we can see here uh, the back one is uh, without activating uh, the absorbent with uh, nitrogen oxide, and uh, the red one is uh, using one point zero more uh, activated uh, region. And then the blue one is 1.2. What you can see here is very important when you develop the absorbent that uh, you need to check uh, what the uh, function, chemical functional group that would be uh, uh, the active site, yeah, active site to absorb or to bound uh, the heavy metals. So, in terms of absorption, so you can he uh, see here. There is uh, like uh, uh, many of uh, uh, what we call the uh, peak here, peak, uh, many peak here, yeah, uh, actually presenting all the peak, uh, presenting uh, silk oxide, silk oxide, yeah. Here, four hundred eighty sixty eight point seven uh, for uh, silicon working and so on. Yeah, we can highlight here that the effect of the uh, activating 
the effect of activating is uh, uh, not constant. Not constant. What does it mean not constant? For example, like this, uh, all uh, all the curve of the curve uh, or the peak for without uh, activating the absorbent, uh, the graph the graph uh, at the top when increase to point uh, one uh, molar, it, it's drop. Yeah, it's drop uh, a little bit. But increasing to a point tomorrow is like uh, back to the top. It's very interesting. Uh, normally, when we apply more concentration of the, uh, we tell you honestly. Normally, when apply it to uh, to increase the uh, activating region, uh, concentration is constantly or continuously increase or constantly decrease. So very important here that the absorbent has uh, activated side uh, since we have a uh, functional group uh, silica oxide, silicon oxide here, rocking, stretching, wagging, bonding, whatever here. So Alhamdulillah, uh, this is uh, the, the value of our absorbent here. Uh, you can. Uh, apply for absorption of heavy metals, especially for CO2 ion. And we did XRD current suggestion. Yeah, uh, this is before the activation. We can see here, uh, just, I just highlight this one. Uh, this is actually first fresh uh, result we got, and also uh, from Bandung, uh, we got uh, at uh, fourth. Obtain uh, of October the result and I just uh, highlight here. So we can see here from perspective of SRD. Also, we have uh, the curve like this uh, presenting amorphous uh, uh, silica oxide particle, not the crystal. The crystal different uh, profile is like a uh, flat. So this one according to the expert. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, doctor um, from the ITB, Dr. Nur Hidayah. So, yes, I agree with you. There's this around more crystal silica oxide particle, not a uh, crystal oxide. That's why it is, it is uh, uh, like a pores on the surface of the uh, particle, uh, so different with crystal. So, we improve again by XRD result. Also, we have result from ITB yeah, using ICP OS. Um, sent me uh, last month. Uh, you can see here. So, from the silicified hole, we have it's like uh, it's from MIPA sample, PT MIPA Bersaudara from West Malabo. So, we have here 85. Uh, 63 percent uh, CO2 in uh, this weight weights uh, percent in weight yeah and then the second sample is uh, 67.77 and the other uh, component we can uh, look at here and uh, this is loy loy is like um, uh, the component that uh, is the uh, is a volatile matter uh, the rest one yeah but the most important thing is we have a CO oxide here as the uh, promoting activity site to absorb uh, uh, salt that. And we have also uh, XRF. Yeah, this I said uh, we got from Bandung yeah, on 14 uh, yeah, October 2020. Yeah, we approve again, then after the activating uh, absorbent, so CO2 increase. This means that from literature, it's a proof that when apply, we apply the uh, reaction agent like N, uh, uh, natrium oxide, yeah, gallium oxide, whatever, so actually uh, uh, the region or the chemical can cut the, um, uh, the bound, hydrogen bound 
and carbon bound wearable. So the volatile metal can uh, reduce in the absorbent. So this is we got the result that SEO2 yeah, increase to uh, 98%. Yeah. Also, this is uh, the component of element. So this is the component of the oxide, this component of element. Actually, we got many SE in the sample, 97%. So from perspective of SRD, F FTR, XRD, this is a possible material to be uh, absorbent for heavy metal. We analyze also the porosity of the uh, absorbent here using the same, but uh, this is only 1.5 kilo uh, scale yeah, times. So actually we just look at, uh, not really in detail, but um, I could say that it's clearly that when we apply the natural oxide to uh, active or to uh, to use as activated region, so we can see here that the porosity is roughly the porosity increase. Yeah, this is more rapid uh, surface. Uh, we have more uh, like we can can um, make larger. Uh, view here, yeah. Look, uh, okay. So it is different actually, but I could say that the effect of the uh, activated region is clear here to increase the porosity of uh, urban. Unfortunately, because we have uh, uh, limited time to send our uh, sample to get the BET uh, result. A B BET result is actually uh, uh, presenting what actually uh, the, uh, uh, the value of the volume, uh, the surface area of absorbent. So uh, in future, maybe we can continue this research. Yeah, because this uh, primary research. So it's already, it's deep already, but uh, it should be it should be BET result to present a volume of pores and a surface area of uh, pores. Then we move on the um, the effect of constant time. All right, in general, uh, contact time, yeah, contact time uh, really uh, affect absorbent mass on the absorbent. Yeah, really affect. Yeah, the absorption capacity of the absorbent can be exponentially increased. So we've got many papers uh, published that different profile of uh, capacity of absorption uh, related to contact time. Uh, this linear exponential decrease, sometimes exponent and then and, uh, and decrease the uh, very dynamic. Yeah. But in general, it should be uh, stable at the end of the time. Yeah, it should be stable. Yeah, for reversible reaction uh, or absorption. Yeah, this it's actually a like a dynamic uh, like wave here. Yeah? I have many people and then one. Uh, uh, paper is very, very, very difficult to approve. Uh, so uh, the same have the same result uh, as we got. So here you can see for the silicide coal, uh, the normally uh, for the uh, uh, the low concentration of initial concentration, it's stable very quick. Yeah, very quick in fifteen minutes or stable already. Yeah, our substance is like we eating, we eating something, we eating rice. Yeah, uh, we eat rice, uh, a small portion, and then we just look and finish. Yeah, uh, we eat more rice, rice, rice. Sometimes uh, we got promoting, we got promoting. It's like dynamic. Yeah, uh, so we can see here that uh, uh, mostly. Um, 
uh, at the end of the day, oh, all right, at the end of the time, <laughs> at, the of the day, at the end of the time, so I copy my, <laughs> my supervisor, Professor Moses, at the end of the day, <laughs> at the end of the time, the concentration of uh, uh, copper iron, yeah, is uh, reaching stable. Yeah, but for the uh, the last, yeah, the the, uh, the highest, we limit five to two hundred milligram per liter. But for two hundred, is like like this. But we can we can say that at the end, inshallah, inshallah, is stable. Yeah, yeah. I got many students to uh, to present their thesis and uh, their uh, bachelor degree thesis. So we got a debate, uh, some uh, lecturer agree that it should be stable, but the other lecture depend depend on the absorbent. It should be uh, stable, but sometimes dynamic, uh, especially for receiver direction absorption. And we got here also in our result, uh, uh, yeah, effect of initial concentration is, uh, we can see here, uh, the more uh, initial concentration, normally the more uh, absorption capacity at equilibrium uh, time. Yeah, so it should be more and more. But uh, I already sure depend on the uh, uh, what 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 the isotherm absorption about. Sometimes it's linear linear uh, without. Uh, any stable or uh, yeah, any stable performance or stable uh, curve, yeah. But for long wave, normally it's uh, like exponential decrease. So another important uh, we need to highlight here: yeah, the yeah, effect of activator concentration. We have a uh, natural side, natural side, yeah, natural side to activate the absorbent. Uh, we can see here from different uh, con initial concentration of uh, uh, CO2 in the solution, we have different profile. For the low concentration, is like uh, nothing, yeah? It's like flats, yeah. Like I say, uh, like we eat something small, it's like go to your stomach and then finish. And the rest of the time, we need, we need more, we need more to eat. But for the uh, concentration of uh, CO2 uh, in solution, yeah, uh, 200 point uh, nine nine milligram per liter, we got uh, lovely uh, profile here. So we got lovely profile. So we got the maximum. Actually, we got the maximum maximum uh, capacity of uh, absorption at equilibrium at uh, 0 0.1 uh, molar. Other side. All right, assumption kinetic by nonlinear model. We are really interested. Uh, normally, we uh, highlight I highlight the kinetic uh, parameter using a linear model. So, uh, in the last two semester, I uh, surprised my student. He is he, con he, is he concerned about nonlinear model. So, all right, it's okay. Uh, we found that uh, it's better nonlinear model because it's presenting the real model. Uh, so, but uh, we need to minimize. We need to minimize the error between the data from you got from the experiment and then the data from modeling. So, the, for the kinetic absorption, we use uh, two models only. Yeah, have sort of first order and second. Uh, order we can uh, this is familiar uh, in chemical engineering or chemistry this is a familiar uh, formula for association kinetic the first one for the first order and second for the second order so we uh, use the framework like uh, optimization to minimize uh, sse uh, yeah, this is the error between the data you got from uh, lab and the data from uh, modeling. So what we found, yeah, yeah. So uh, we, we can see yeah, from uh, this is the first uh, order and this is the second order. Yeah? So when 
we highlight the the R square or SSE. So uh, we got the result that uh, actually the copper ion absorption on the silicified sorbent uh, fitted well to nonlinear pseudo second order model. Uh, we can uh, calculate the average uh, R square here, uh, coefficient correlation least square. Uh, we got 0.9825 and SSE uh, standard uh, for error is here, yeah, two point something. So finally, we got from kinetic absorption study, we got the uh, maximum uh, absorption capacity at the equilibrium condition. It's about uh, 13.185 and 65 milligram per gram. And the kinetic uh, rate constant, kinetic rate constant presenting how many uh, gram uh, per gram of a solvent uh, per minute, uh, uh, it's uh, the absorbent absorbed on the absorbent. Then uh, we also uh, investigate the parameter of the uh, absorption as the by a nonlinear model. We got a uh, three model, Langmuir, Brundlich, and PET model. Yeah. Again, uh, we try to optimize. We try to optimize uh, is minimizing, minimizing, minimizing the uh, standard of error. Yeah, and the R square. So we got here from uh, the calculation. The dot one, this one presenting the real data, experiment data, and then yeah, we got long model the the black one and uh, the green one nonlinear from the model and the red one PAT model. So we can see here that very uh, a little bit different uh, from uh, no activating uh, preparation and activating using one point molar natural mass the head of hydroxide and point two. So we come up with the conclusion here. Yeah, from the nonlinear uh, absorption isotope we got here uh, SSE. Uh, the the smallest one is for a long width is presenting how fit how fit uh, the model with the experimental data. If the L more 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 uh, smaller. Yeah small one is better uh, and then r square uh, we got uh, 0.99 is close to one uh, it is uh, higher than our uh, model from link and pt so I, I, I we can say here that uh, for uh, in terms of the uh, absorption isotherm uh, really uh, favorable or fitted with a nonlinear long model model. So from here we got uh, uh, KM, KM, KM in maximum uh, capacity of absorption. Uh, here for zero uh, molar of natrium hydroxide is about 9.4 and when increase to be 0.1 millimolar to be 1.7 and then increase 0.2 to be uh, uh, 14 yeah 1.1 well, 14 uh, yeah about 55 and then uh, we got we have 12 so here uh, we can conclude that from perspective of FTIR from uh, XRD, SRF, uh, SRF, we got uh, a improvement that uh, there is uh, active site of uh, silicon oxide to be a uh, uh, functional group in the absorbent can uh, absorb or can attack any uh, heavy metal ions. And from here, we can uh, conclude that, uh, yeah, Silicified coal is promotion raw material for silica based absorbent. Yeah. Inshallah, this is the novel of our study. Uh, Inshallah, uh, in the future, uh, uh, any researchers from absorption uh, area, we can uh, continue our study and we can uh, also cite. Inshallah.
All right. Uh, I think uh, time for this to finish. Yeah, to conclude the discussion. Now I would like to open up the question and answer session. Dr. Anggun. Okay, thank you very much, Professor Muslim. Uh, Enough time. Yeah, all right, ladies and gentlemen, any any questions, please, for our second keynote speaker for today's session? Okay, while we are waiting, there is an uh, announcement in the chat box, ladies and gentlemen, please kindly um, fill in the participants uh, attendance list. I'm sorry, we, we, we got a question here, Professor Muslim. <laughs> All right, thank you. Yep. I check. Or Ibu, could you yeah, read Ibu it? May Purba. Uh, do you want to speak it by yourself, Bu May? Or oh. shall we read it? Yeah, uh, read it, please. Yeah. Okay. I'm trying to find the. Yes, so. Um... Uh, Professor Mus uh, hello Professor Muslim uh, Miss May Purba wants to ask you about is there any correlation between the size particle and absorption capacity in your research oh I mean, thank you very much Miss Miss Ba sorry what is name uh, Miss May, 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 Diana right, Purba. May yeah, May. Yeah. She was born May. on May, I believe. Yeah, May. Oras May. <laughs> yeah, I was born in May then also. So, any, uh, Ed, there is a relationship between uh, uh, area, surface area, and absorption capacity. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, the more we can search in internet or uh, and other paper related to absorption, the more surface area, insha'Allah, or I could say insha'Allah, insha'Allah, the more capacity, absorption capacity we got. Because uh, it's like, it's like uh, we, we apply, we apply, we apply uh, in, we apply in, in uh, on the surface of uh, uh paper yeah the more surface of paper we have and the more inshallah the more uh absorption capacity we got the more absorbed being absorbed on the surface of the uh absorbed this is the close uh, the short uh, answer for uh, me okay miss me does it answer your question but <laughs> can I can I say but please but, please please yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. but we got different also result yeah different different uh, assortment different uh, uh, profile or result uh, related to mass of absorbent the more the more mass of absorbent actually presenting the more surface of the uh, absorbent to be uh, promoting side to absorb uh, metal ions. But because of the formula of the uh, 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 absorption capacity, absorption capacity equals to initial uh, concentration in solution minus in this uh, uh, equilibrium concentration of uh, absorbent in solution over the gram for the mass of absorbent sometimes depend on the gap depend on the bias depend of the uh, deviation between the uh, initial concentration and the final concentration absorbent in solution so it could be very yeah it could be very so uh, we got debate also in uh, presenting a, a result in our university city uh, but yeah de depend but normally in general it's more uh, surface error of course the more uh, uh, absorption capacity we got inshallah any question uh, may uh, it's okay my answer 
Miss May? I want to say, mm -hmm. I want to say thank you very much in Batanis. I forgot already. Oh, okay. Uh, it's out of my research expertise for Bataks. <laughs> yes. Miss May, in, in are you Japan, there? In Japan, Japanese, don't worry, don't worry. We are coming back to Prof uh, Tony, yeah? Prof Muslim. Yeah, yeah. My <laughs> dream right. to continue my study to Japan, but uh, finally I got Australia. <laughs> yeah, true. Ah, she's yeah. answering. Yeah. All right, May. Okay. Uh, thank you very much for the answer, Professor Muslim, with the smiley face. <laughs> thank you very much. All right. Um, any no more questions, please? Is there chat there? Mm, yeah. Mm, no more chat. Um, ladies and gentlemen, please uh, raise your hand if you want to ask the question directly to Professor Muslim. Uh, or yeah, typing in the chat. Oh, we have uh, another question uh, Prof. Muslim. So, Miss Rizka Amalia, do you want to say it directly? Rizka Amalia, Rizka Amalia. I try to, to, to open Rizka Amalia. Oh, Alhamdulillah. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi Good morning, Prof. Muslim. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi As we know, the are numerous methods for several IP methods for West water that have been developed, such as pre-prestation, number of prestation, ion exchange, electrochemical recovery, biochemical suppression, and so on. But this uh, protest uh, still face shortcomings, such as long process time. <laughs> yeah, 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 I agree. So generation in large uh, quantities, high cost and filter blockades. So based on your research, how effective is the absorption process using solution for uh, coal compared to other process to remove? Happy matter from post paper. Uh, all right. Yeah, uh, because it's um, my area of research. Uh, I agree with uh, the uh, statement or the uh, uh, point of view. Some research in this area that's absorption actually affected uh, less uh, economic uh, value. Yeah, easy to apply. Yeah. Uh, uh, compared to other uh, method to 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 reduce or to remove of happy metal. So the question is uh, how effective? Yeah, how effective? Yeah, uh, there is no single value. What I could say, there is no single value. What effective? Uh, uh, we need to focus on. Effective, it mean simple or effective or what, what actually? Effective, easy to carry? Yeah, inshallah, easy to carry. Yeah, more effective, easy to carry. Uh, I have experience that I just bring uh, 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 equipment from the laboratory and then I, uh, I bring to my home and I run research in the uh, my uh, 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 lab room that yeah I could say lab room in at home sometime in Paris also I I can do yeah simple you can do uh, fastly yeah so it only in two two days we, we can uh, finish uh, a couple runs of absorption effective it's mean that more uh, as uh, absorbent being uh, reduced yeah I could say. I have more reviews, but uh, this is a review, review on this uh, study that I could uh, still agree that that's more effective than other uh, uh, method. Yeah. It is uh, okay. The answer is Kamalia. Ms. Kamalia, are you a student from, uh, former student from uh, Sakhal University? I really uh, familiar with this name, Rizka Amalia. My student also, her name is Rizka Amalia, uh, about five years ago. Miss Rizka Amalia, do you want to have a word with Professor Muslim, please? Ah, okay. 
Okay. Uh, okay. He is answering in the type, uh, Prof. Musa. Yeah. All right. Oh, from the Penogor University. Oh, operator, yeah. please help to unmute. Okay. All right. Okay, operator is now checking up the unmuting. Okay, thank you very much, Riska. I'm very clear. Thank you very much. Yeah, you're really welcome. Okay. All, All right. right, it's from another Idral question. Amri. Mm -hmm. It's from Idral Amri. Could I read it? Dr. Amri, are you there? Uh, operator, please help for unmuting. Uh, Dr. Idra. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Dr. Idra Amri. Amri. Assalamualaikum, Prof. Muslim. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi Is there any assumption to decide linear or linear model? We should homogen and heterogen. Yeah. Is there any comparison result between model data and between the model of others? All right. Uh, we... we we, we, we didn't, we didn't, yeah. We didn't highlight the uh, linear model uh, at the moment uh, because I tried to, 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 to highlight different from pre previous study, yeah. We, we uh, actually uh, propose this assumption for PB uh, ion novel uh, in 2000, in uh, 2019, uh, ICCS conference. So we got the result there from uh, linear uh, linear model uh, perspective, but we didn't compare to nonlinear. Yeah. So so actually, what what presenting linear and nonlinear? So sometime, yeah, sometime. Yeah, we very difficult to uh, to what we call it to view to view the assumption uh, profile um, is uh, in terms of assumption capacity over time uh, quantum time in linear model. So unless you have unless you have a mathematic uh, background to minimize uh, to minimize between the error between the model data and experimental data and then also you need to uh, to compare the uh, the the bias uh, you, you present the bias so to easy uh, uh, view to easy view uh, to calculate easily the uh, parameter of uh, a certain kinetic uh, uh, mathematic uh, uh, scientists uh, scientists in, the, in this area uh, so and Lagergen uh, uh, try to uh, uh, linear the model and by linear that the model we can easily um, um, uh, calculate the a parameter of kinetic const, kinetic uh, parameter km then and key rate constant uh, for assumption just by plotting x and y uh, simple graph yeah and then from that we can uh, find or obtain the uh, slope of the uh, graph the linear uh, graph and then from the slope we can get the km Oh, basically, uh, almost. Okay. All right. Dr. Amri. Uh, yes. This is the uh, assumption. Yes, okay. Okay, thank you, uh, Professor Abrar, uh, for your explaining. But uh, sorry, I. Uh, I don't uh, watch uh, from the detail from the first to the last of your presentation. So just uh, to, to know how about these models, what the assumption and uh, how effective the models when we compare to the other models. Uh, because uh, 
many years ago, I have ever to do this, uh, this uh, uh, metal ion removals from the rivers, uh, from the electric uh, waste, but using the ion exchange, uh, oh, right, plate, yeah, yeah, yeah. ion exchange plate column. So we try to model uh, oh, forward, right. backwards, and anything. Yeah. So this, uh, well, I, sorry, yeah, I, yeah. I, I I never seen, but uh, I don't uh, yeah, yeah. watch from the first for, until the last. So just to to ask you about this. But okay, yeah. uh, Prof Muslim, thank you so I, much I, for your no answer. Worries, Dr. Amri. You remind me when I was in Cato uh, University for PhD program. Actually, what I did in university, at the Cato University for PhD program, is I use ion exchange. I use resin, resin. I use resin, and then the also but the being also is uh, um, gold cup gold complex ion, gold complex ion. So. In that time, I focus on modeling on the modeling and modeling, modeling and modeling, mathematic model, whatever. It's like touching, it's like touching, you know, uh, uh, many formula. And then my supervisor disagree about that because uh, uh, Asai Saro really keen uh, what the real, uh, the real uh, result you got. So whatever uh, my modeling result, I just bring it home. I just bring it home. And then I develop them and then publish later on. And then they don't interested in joint publication. So uh, after uh, I finish my study, I, I realized that if I continue this uh, topic using recent and uh, about uh, the goal uh, complex. So uh, at the moment, I'm concerned about uh, the illegal mining uh, in Aceh, but I really concern also continue of my study especially in assumption so what i do i change my topic still assumption but i need to change the absorbent yeah i need to change the absorbent from uh, ferrous metal yeah uh, we need more money okay thank you very much prof muslim dr amri uh, okay, ladies and gentlemen, we have few more minutes for the Q&A session for uh, this second session of the second day um, by Professor Abdul Muslim. Please, any more questions? Oh, all right. Um, Currently, we have a technical error for uh, Prof. Muslim. Maybe we gonna wait for a few minutes. Okay, Professor Abdul Muslim, you are here. Welcome back. Uh, the microphone uh, isn't connected. We are afraid. Okay, yes. Okay, operator, please help for unmuting. Great. Okay, welcome back, Prof. Yeah, I got problem with my laptop now. I use my mobile. <laughs> oh yeah. With the background of the conference. So uh, yeah, uh, back to my story that uh, I changed the alphabet uh, term to be uh, heavy metals ions, and then I changed to be uh, the alphabet uh, focus area to be uh, lignosinous or neutral material. So easy for me. So we can uh, I can co uh, conduct or carry the research with little money my from my pocket, inshallah. Also. Cool. So any question? Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, any more questions? We have a few more minutes with Professor Abdul Muslim, please. 
Uh, Prof, if you allow me to ask you one last question, please, from my side. Yeah, yeah, of course, inshallah. Okay. Uh, uh, Prof Muslim, is there any particular reason for you to use uh, LMA, the Levenberg Marquardt uh, algorithm, apart from its popularity to be one of the trusted algorithm to find the minimum between linear and nonlinear? Please. Masha'Allah, this is the best question to me. The mm -hmm. best question. Thank you. So, mm. uh, I have supervisor from Sayasaro from China. I got uh, Mr. Dr. Huang. Huang. I, I, I remember Huang. Huang Gang. Huang Gang. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, we learn, uh, we learn uh, uh, using willing optimization method using uh, uh, C++ uh, software program, yeah? And then uh, as he, uh, he introduced uh, one of the method, like method that is easy to apply without uh, uh, programming uh, software. So just mm -hmm. simple uh, software, Excel software. I just use Excel software. The important things from my view is uh, why not you use Excel only to to optimize or to optimize uh, the bias between uh, uh, the experimental data uh, and uh, modeling data mm -hmm. in modeling. So from my perspective is uh, just the tools, the tools. I just use the uh, free software, Excel, and then uh, uh, my experience of, uh, I try to uh, solve, uh, like I remember uh, 19 uh, parameters. Nine, you, you can imagine 19 parameters I try to solve uh, yeah. with 19 equation. So when we apply a substitution, whatever the, uh, the method in mathematics to uh, minimize the error between the data from laboratory and the model, uh, uh, the important thing is this method we can uh, uh, use uh, in Excel program. This is the point. Okay, okay. Wow, that's a very nice explanation and simple explanation, uh, Professor Muslim. Thank you very much. It's actually a new one. I'm not really expert in uh, simulations, but I think uh, it's an inevitable uh, field for us and, uh, engineers. Yeah. All right. So um, we believe the time is up. Oh, yeah, that's we are really sorry. Uh, the time uh, is up. So. Professor Abdul Muslim, once again, thank you very much. Alhamdulillah for your uh, insight. Alhamdulillah. Uh, operator, please help me with the certificate. Okay, so Prof. Abdul Muslim, on behalf of the committee, I would like to thank you for the time and all the knowledge given uh, for us. All right, you really welcome. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, that's the end of our uh, keynote speaker session this morning. Uh, once again, uh, my name is Angun as the moderator. Thank you very much for all the participations. Uh, we are looking forward to having another sessions after this and uh, wish that everyone will be on the bless of the Almighty. Once again, thank you very much. Wabillahi taufiq wa Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Thank you for the moderator and keynote speakers. Now let's move on to the sharing session. Sharing speakers are Dr. Tukori Hayat from State Polytechnics of Lok Samoa, Indonesia, Dr. Engineering Asap Bayu Daninan Dianto, from Pendidikan Indonesia University, Indonesia, and Mr. Nana Masrushin from Biomaterial Research Center, Orbrin. In this session, we will be leading by Mrs. Raviari Umi Pramesti. Please extend a warm welcome to the moderator, but let me first read the curriculum vitae first. 
This is Prof. Yari Umi Pramesti, graduated from Jiponogoro University, and now she is a lecturer in Vocational School, Jiponogoro University. To me, Thank you very much for our master of ceremony. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the setting session day two of second international conference on chemical engineering and applied science 2021 held by vocational school Universitas Diponegoro. Let me introduce myself. I am Previari Pramesti and I'm going to be your moderator for this session. Our today's topic is designing tomorrow toward sustainable engineering and technology. So in this occasion, we will have outstanding presentation from our prominent presenter, whom I believe will enrich our insight and knowledge regarding the theme of this seminar. And we will find the answer right after three presentation for about 30 minutes uh, each, and then we will wrap up by the Q&A session for about 30 minutes right after that. So. This remains it until the Q&A session. And I would like to remind all the participants, do not forget to turn on your camera and keep mute during the presentation. Okay, to keep it short, I will acknowledge our first speaker will be Dr. Tukuri Hayat with a presentation entitled Synthesis of Polylactic Acid Nenokitosan Base for Bioscaffold Material with Addition of Zinc Urecamine. Uh, Dr. Tukuri Hayat is a faculty member of Department of Chemical Engineering, Polytechnic Negeri Lok Sumawe, Aceh Utara, Indonesia. He graduated from bachelor degree in chemical engineering from the uh, Syah Kuala University in 1995, complete his master of engineering in chemical engineering from uh, Bandung Institute of Technology. Then he continued his PhD in chemical and environment engineering uh, and graduate from University Putra Malaysia in 2007. His research focuses on material and polymer chemistry, and his latest research entitled Rekayasa Baru Pembuatan Bioscaffold Berpori Polylactic Acid Kitosan Turmeric Untuk Penerapan Regenerasi Kulit. Very well, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Dr. Tukuri Hayat. Good morning, Dr. Tukuri Hayat. You still mute? Okay. okay. Good morning. Good morning, Dr. Tukuri Hayat. Okay, I would like Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. I would like to remind you that you have about 30 minutes to present. Okay, please, the time is yours. Okay, thank you. Uh, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Firstly, I want to sharing the okay. This I uh, I disable to sharing the uh, slide. Would you like to opportunity me to share my slide? Okay, sure. Still cannot uh, share. This slide. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, I will continue to presentation about my topic research, but uh, first. I want to say to everyone, ladies and gentlemen, Assalamualaikum, very good morning. Uh, firstly, I want to say 
honorably to the committee to invite me or us because I prepare this um, investigation with my team. Uh, very thank you to committee to invite me to uh, follow the second okay to the second international conference on chemical engineering and applied science uh, before i present about my topic research uh, about uh, pla nanocytosan i want to introduce myself my name is tekuri hayat i from polytechnic negeri luxmawi in aceh uh, i am uh, in chemical engineering department Okay, uh, let's we start the uh, talk about uh, our research. The title of our research is how to synthesize of PLA, maybe PLA, uh, maybe uh, the people uh, call polylactic acid. One of the most uh, polymer in the world because come from the renewable resources. Uh, in this research, we using material uh, pisang kepok. Uh, very, very uh, indigenous uh, uh, resources uh, because uh, since we are born, we eat pisang kepok. Uh, in in the uh, our research, we using pisang kepok uh, to make a uh, polylactic acid. Uh, in this research, we uh, increase the properties of PLA with uh, nanocytosan. Nanocytosan, we upgrade from uh, citosan, citosan. This is uh, uh, a research. Uh, we need uh, more more time how to get the citosan uh, fulfill the standard of citosan. And now we uh, upgrade the citosan we synthesize uh, to be nanocytosan. We made the uh, PLA nanocytosan to be uh, bioscaffold material. Uh, bio uh, bioscaffold material, very, very versatile material we can use uh, bioscaffold for uh, to treatment our injury uh, and uh, how to uh, make our body uh, can uh, more help uh, after using bioscaffold because non-toxic and in this uh, research, we addition the PLA nanocytosan for bioscaffold uh, to uh, with uh, jet zinc, zinc, Z and curcumin. Curcumin uh, in Indonesia we call uh, kunyit. Mm. We using curcumin powder. Okay. Uh, the background of our research uh, come from uh, the bone or skin injury. Uh, 
we can uh, get the injury uh, from work accident diseases maybe increasing age or congenital we can get uh, the bone or skin injury uh, come from uh, more more uh, uh, accident diseases or uh, increasing age that why uh, our uh, research uh, investigate how to solution uh, to bone injuries. Uh, we make tissue scaffold or bioscaffold engineering, or what is known as a bioscaffold. What is the bioscaffold? The bioscaffold is an artificial structure implanted in the body on which tissue growth in the form of a missing or demixed organ. And what is the requirement to make outdoor manufacturing of bio scaffold? From the literature, we can get, we need requirement to make a bio scaffold Number one, easy to decompose. That's why uh, we use PLA because PLA come from renewable resources, plant, uh, banana kapok, uh, very easy to decompose. And the second, uh, the bioscaffold requirement safely degrade in the body, uh, not affect the bad effect in the body after we insert the uh, bioscaffold inside the our body. And the last one, bioscaffold need good biomaterial interaction. It means bioscaffold can be uh, not, uh, not uh, effective to be our health uh, after we insert the uh, bioscaffold in our body. Okay, we continue. Firstly, uh, I want to explain uh, about the polylactic acid. Is the uh, material can be biodegradable because come from the plant in Indonesia or in Aceh. Uh, so many plant uh, lack lack uh, banana. PLA, PLA very useful if uh, we make uh, as a bioscaffold uh, because uh, our research using the banana pop uh, very bioscaffold biomaterial non toxic and non Carcigoni. That is uh, suitable for uh, standard to medical application. But the PLA has uh, limitation because uh, not uh, not good uh, for the tensile strength or mechanical properties. That's why we need to adding something or uh, we need 
to adding the filler to the PLA uh, to increase the performance uh, like mechanical properties of nanocomposite of uh, the uh, material. In this research, we uh, using filler uh, nanocytosan. Before maybe we know uh, citosan uh, very very uh, widely used uh, as the biopolymer material to tissue engineering because uh, citosan has uh, uh, material antimicrobial activity, biocompatibility, and non but if we, we use uh, chitosan non uh, treatment uh, to be nano chitosan, we has the result uh, chitosan not compatible with uh, the PLA. Uh, that why we need to convert uh, chitosan in nanoform that uh, that uh, one of the interesting in this uh, research in another part of the uh, our research we adding uh, jet and uh, curcumin why because uh, with adding jet and curcumin we can get the material more increase uh, mechanical properties uh, from uh, pristine material and more can define from a type the micro uh, from uh, bacterial uh, we can get the material uh, anti-bacteria. Uh, the purpose of uh, the, uh, finally, I want to uh, explain the purpose of our research is how to produce uh, bioscaffold uh, based PLA, chitosan and get and curcumin. Uh, we investigate their physical and mental properties to be material compatible uh, as bio scaffold. In the uh, research literature, we got uh, several techniques to production the bio scaffold. Uh, a few of the methods are uh, freeze drying method, gas forming method, electro spinning method, liquid liquid phase separation method, solvent casting and reticent leaching, and the last thermal induced phase separation. Uh, we can uh, use the uh, all the method, but in this conference, I just uh, introduce about thermal induced phase, phase separation. Why? Because uh, the advantage uh, to use thermal induced phase separation uh, easy to synthesize. No need uh, too much uh, catalyst noise of energy because use temperature not high, uh, pressure not high, uh, very, very uh, uh, cheap uh, to use energy. And it can guarantee the interconnectivity of the process of 
Sky, Sky Four. Okay. This is a procedure uh, we use in a laboratory uh, to produce of bioscaffold. Very, very uh, long uh, way to produce of uh, PLA come from young bananas or uh, bananas kepok. Uh, make to be start first uh, to make uh, produce lactic acid. After uh, got the lactic acid, we continue the uh, synthesize uh, to to make polylactic acid. This is a step of uh how to uh, synthesis of uh, PLA polylactic acid in another part of a research we produce the nanocytosan nanocytosan we producing from cytosan uh, we already got the method how to produce cytosan uh, with uh, three years uh, research. Uh, cytosan we produce, uh, fulfill the standard uh, AS, uh, ASTN, American Standard uh, Testing Machine. Uh, from the cytosan, we uh, using uh, acetic acid solution and we uh, mix with uh, 2000 rpm stirrer uh, uh, for two years two two hours until we got the clear solution after that, we centrifuge the uh, cytosan uh, more than one hour. And then we continue to stirring in one hour. After that, we can go the nano cytosan. The third part of our research is how to produce zinc curcumin. We adding zinc curcumin with uh, comparison one uh, one more. We stirring and mixing. Uh, after that, we wasting with water uh, and finally we drying with uh, temperature 40 degrees Celsius for one day in the oven, not in the sun. After we got the uh, zinc curcumin, we mixing the nanocytosan, PLA, zinc curcumin, uh, heating and stirring at 100 degrees Celsius. After that, we sieving to get uh, in um, 200 mesh and we drying uh, with temperature 40 degrees Celsius for three days. After that, we got the bio scaffold material. This is uh, uh, a part of uh, our uh, products. Uh, starts from banana kepok, dried skin, 
and uh, material bioscape wall to uh, test uh, tensile stress. Okay. Finally, we uh, can explain about the result and discussion uh, our bioscape wall. Uh, in this uh, conference, we uh, prepare three sample. We call sample number one, number two, and number three. Uh, the difference of an, uh, between uh, sample number one, two, and three is uh, number one, we use 19.5% uh, PLA, 1% nano chitosan, and 0.5% gen and curcumin. In a sample number two, we using 19.6% PLA, 3% uh, nanocytosan, and 1% gen and curcumin. And the sample number three, we use 19.3.5% uh, uh, PLA, 5% nanocytosan, and uh, one point five percent gen n curcumin. We got the result in this tensile strength after we adding with nanocytosan. The tensile strength more increase compare the more less the nanocytosan. Because nanocytosan will make the material more uh, increase the tensile strength because cytosan can defend can defend the attack of bacteria. Our material come from uh, plant uh, very very. Uh, easy to decompose, very easy to biodegradable. After we adding with the nanocytosan, nanocytosan can define the bacteria. That why uh, uh, the tensile strength will be increased after uh, adding the uh, nanocytosan. Okay. Uh, we also investigate the material with FTIR analysis. In this uh, analysis, we got the uh, uh, functional group like alcohol, alkenes, aldehyde, alkyl methyl and carbon after we adding with uh, nanocytosan and jet and curcumin we got a new compound nco we call the nco uh, nco related with uh, uh, compound called isocyanin. Okay. Another one of our uh, investigate we characterization the uh, material using same. 
uh, the result of uh, investigation with Sam, we got the nano situation uh, not uh, spread evenly in the surface of the material. Uh, we got the distribution of uh, nano situation uh, not uh, uh, full in the uh, PLA, in the surface of PLA. Uh, uh, maybe this uh, this the result uh, get because uh, nano citosan not to uh, homogeneous with the uh, metric uh, with the metric uh, material. Excuse me, Dr. Tuku, three minutes remaining. Okay, thank you. Uh, okay, uh, three minutes, I use the time for uh, uh, describe our uh, conclusion of our research. I want to uh, tell uh, in Polytechnic Negri Loksmawe, in our lab, we can produce the nanocytosan uh, and then we can produce PLA uh, to make uh, uh, bioscaffold. In this research, we can increase the uh, tensile strength of the pristine of uh, PLA uh, with using the nanocytosan. Uh, PLA we can make from our uh, garden material, very, very, uh, so many uh banana in our garden maybe we can use uh, uh to make uh banana kepok to be material pla uh, very easy to use uh we hope our research can uh adding to economy value of our plan uh and finally, we effort to develop big uh, bioscaffold application in Indonesia. Uh, we hope that. Okay, uh, thank you uh, to uh, listen our uh, presentation. Uh, I give back uh, the time for the moderator. Thank okay. you. Thank you very much for a very powerful presentation about synthesis of polylactic acid and nanokitosan based for bioscaffold material with the addition of zinc curcumin. This is a new thing for me, especially Dr. Toku. Yang, yes. gepok, yang gepok banana can be very useful, very interesting. For the participant who has question for Dr. Toku, please hold on until the Q&A session. Okay, without further ado, I would like to welcome our second presenter, Doctor of Engineering Asep Bayu Dani Nandianto, by his presentation about particle technology for science technology, economic and education. Okay, Doctor Nandianto is an associate professor in the Department of Chemistry Education at Universitas Pendidikan Indonesia. He received Bachelor of Engineering at Institute Technology Bandung, Indonesia. He completed his Master of Engineering and Doctor of Engineering in the Department of Chemistry and Chemical Engineering at Hiroshima University, Japan. Dr. Nadianto research is in the area of particle technology, specifically the production of fine particles. He has published more than 241 different Scopus indexed journals paper, and he also received 31 awards and honors, including 
George Cleansing PhD Award from American Institute of Chemical Engineer 2014. And now he is in the list of top 10 best scientists in Indonesia based on Sintaris Tech Brain. Very productive figure. So ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Doctor of Engineering Asep Bayu Dani Nandianto. Good morning, Dr. Nandianto. Hello, Dr. Nandi. Okay. okay. Hello, good morning. Uh, I'm very sorry. Yeah, yeah okay. it is still mute that I cannot put the uh, unmute. Okay, okay. Good okay, morning, nice everyone. Meet, good morning. Nice to meet you, Dr. Nandianto. Uh, yes, may I inform you that you will have about 30 minutes to present. So, Dr. Nandi, the time is yours. Thank you very much for uh, moderator and then also I think Universitas Dipenogoro, correct? For this uh, ISEAS uh, 2021 conference. Uh, just a moment. Uh, let me share my screen. Is it possible? Okay, okay sure. Okay. Thank you very much uh, everyone here. Thank you very much for the participant. Uh, I'm Asep Bayudan Nandianto. I'm from the department Pendidikan Kimia Universitas Pendidikan Indonesia Indonesia I would like to present about uh, particle technology from abroad for Indonesia so um, from the production economic and feasibility study and also for education This moment, there's I think there's an error. Okay, uh, this is my brief curriculum today. So, uh, should I speak in Indonesia or in English? Which one is better? I'm sorry, moderator. Should it's I speak okay. in English? It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. In English or in Bahasa, it's okay. Okay, I think because most of the participants is Indonesian, so I would like to speak in Indonesian if possible. So. When I make a presentation, everybody will understand well than when I speak in English. Okay. Okay. Uh, so, uh, ini kurikulum vitae saya, jadi uh, istilahnya tak kenal maka tak sayang, correct? Ya. Yeah, um, so, saya uh, lulus tahun 2000 dari uh, SMA 7 Bandung dan masuk teknik kimia ITB. Lalu pernah jadi guru juga di SMA 7 Bandung juga selama saya kuliah. Lalu 2005 saya sebagai sarjana teknik. Lalu ke Jepang, lulus master 2008, ya, 2008 dan 2011 lulus doktor. Setelah doktor, saya jadi visiting professor di CEN, Center of Excellence Nanotechnology, King Fahd University Petroleum and Minerals, Saudi Arabia. Setelah itu, kembali lagi ke Jepang sebagai visiting special researcher under GSPS. Nah, ini salah satu yang bergengsi ya, di dunia itu ada tiga, ya, GSPS, Fulbright, dengan Humboldt, maksudnya satu lagi. Lalu 2013 sebagai asisten profesor di Hiroshima University. Lalu 2018 pernah menjadi visit asisten profesor di Tokyo Institute of Technology Japan. Lalu 2018 juga dapat Fulbright untuk pergi ke Virginia Commonwealth University, United States. 2019 sebagai visiting profesor di Sanford University dan juga University of Arizona, United States. Dan 2021 pernah jadi visiting lecturer di University Tun On Hussein, Malaysia. UTHM. Dan saya berjoin ke UPI itu uh, 2018 dan 2000, eh, 2012, maaf, 2012 dan 2018, Alhamdulillah sebagai Associate Professor. Uh, Alhamdulillah saat ini sudah mendapatkan 33 award yang tadi sudah dijelaskan oleh moderator bahwa yang salah satu yang berkenci itu adalah The Society of Chemical Engineering Japan Award for Outstanding Young Researcher. Ini tahun 2013, SCG, dan juga uh, The George Clinching Best PhD Award 2013. Dan terakhir itu uh, di list di Stanford University, United States, dan Elsevier, Alhamdulillah masuk 2% Best Scientist di dunia ya, ini 2020 dan 2021. Selain daripada itu, ya uh, di, <coughs> di Sinta juga Alhamdulillah, di ranking Sinta masuk dalam top 10 di 
Sinta tapi ini kan bergerak ya Bapak Ibu semua ada 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 semua ya. Jadi ada yang uh, naik atau turun ya gitu ya. Dan tercatat skopus terakhir saya 241 ya, 21 dengan high index 29 dan uh, pernah juga beberapa kali di koran dan media massa. Dr. Nandi, yeah. uh, could you speak okay. in English because we okay, have okay. overseas participants? Okay, good, good. Okay. Sorry. Okay, okay, it's no problem. Okay. So other experience is uh, I'm also in editor in chief Indonesian Journal of Science and Technology since 2016. So now I just I just is rank number one in engineering and computer science in Indonesia and also uh, second rank in Indonesia for all the all the list of the Indonesian journal. Uh, also I'm also uh, now in editor in chief in several journals in in UPI. So, for example, I'd say, I'd say, e, IGOMER, IGCSNE, and IGR. I think all of you, you can check. Yeah. Yeah, I hope uh, we are very glad because I just is one of the best, best uh, journal now in, in the world. Yeah. Okay. So, before I begin my PowerPoint, I mean, my uh, share, sharing session, so I would like to ask to you and also to me myself. So why we, we have to write? Because we are writing a history of humankind. So there are several positive points. For example, uh, everybody knowing us, everybody understanding what our specialty are, and also used for improving society and technology. And our points are famous, become popular, become visiting. Because, uh, because some university asked me, for example, to, to come to the universities because uh, they understand us, right? And also other points are, for example, avoiding other people to take out our intellectual property and also developing science, technology, and industry. So for our the meaning of the paper itself, the paper uh, is divided by two, two types. The first type is scientific paper, as we know, sort of communication letter, report, article, mini review, review, book chapter, edited book and book, and also the other is patent, and also copyright or hak cipta, right? This is the meaning of the, why we have to write the paper. So why we have to write the paper, why we have to write everything uh, about our research, because one of the main point is the university ranking, because your uni institution or country is measured and another thing and benchmark. So this one, if we, is, it is depend on, it is depending on the number of papers and then also the citation. As we know, this is a 20, I think, uh, 29 top university and uh, what is research center in Indonesia. So until now, uh, even though we are, we found that we are increasing uh, the number of publication in our country and um, I mean, in our institution, but uh, other countries, so, for example, uh, one of our countries is, for example, Malaysia. Malaysia is also increasing well. Yeah, and then also we have to catch them up. So we, that is why we need to write everything as we can. Okay. It is update from the 2019 to 2021 in our my lab and the other research group. As we know that even in our lab, we have a model. So it means that, uh, one article journal should be published in one month. So that's why uh, in our publication, in our group, we are now working hard how to make publication as much as possible in quality and also in quantity. So even we also teach the first grade student in UPI for the one class. So even one, uh, the first grade of uh, the first grade, I mean that after they, uh, what is, um, they graduate from the high school, they can make a research and then they can make, uh, I, I think at that time, 21 copyright and then three books and then article journals in Scopus and then in a Google Scholar uh, index it. So let's we begin our presentation. So for the introduction, the particle itself, particle uses and relation, why particle must be we have to make a research in particle technology. So we, we uh, every, uh, everything in the, in the consumer products, in healthcare related environment, and so economic and education. 
safety and regulatory and then even national uh, security and military as we know that uh, the particle particle technology is used okay and then uh, so let's we begin with our ex research experience about so uh, i finished my my bachelor degree and then going up to the master and then master and increasing and also in i got uh, 2011 got a doctor engineering doctor engineering and start in ubi 2011 and then also my research topic is the same about synthesis and optimization and economic feasibility study and education so let's continue so that's why uh, when the the above demand cause causes the increase of particle production because it is it is relating to the um, energy and research consumption industry population limitation of energy and resources that's why uh, the problem is need more efficient and material or enhanced material performance. Indeed, material with controllable size and morphology is one of the suggested problem solver. So that's why we need to make a further studies in understanding about particle technology to make it the bridge between science, scientists and professional. Okay, let me begin our research in Japan 20, uh, 2005 until 2013. So. I produce about several articles here. For example, uh, in our group, we made uh, magnesium fluoride and then also calcium fluoride with spherical cubes and hexagonal. And also we made uh, magnesium fluoride donuts. And also we made a silica core hollow. And also mag uh, magnesium fluoride hollow raspberry. I think it is um, all the particle during our stay in 20, I mean, uh, in 2005 until 2013, relates to the lens application, so for making lens. And then I moved to Saudi Arabia, 2011. So at that time, I was in uh, King Fahd University Petroleum and Minerals, and then the research subject is, uh, the subject was focused on the how to crack the oil, okay? So we made some catalysts, at that time, we used uh, HZSM22 in a minute or TON for, for how to make uh, cracking the catalyst, uh, I mean, cracking the oil. And also, after we can see here, after 2000, going back to Indonesia completely, 2014. And then, as we can see here, our my publication, especially, is going down. So, after going down, and then now, uh, going up again yeah, during this down condition. So I made a one book and then also 2000, 2015, we made a starting for preparing Indonesian Journal of Science and Technology and Alhamdulillah, within two years, indexed by Scopus and within four years, we got Q1 and until now, Alhamdulillah, Q1. I hope uh, next year also with Q1 and we can, yeah. and then we can see here there's a, uh, because uh, we are now many students here. So if you are in the down condition, so do not frustrate. So do not, uh, what is, uh, we have to keep fighting. So in this case, at least we have to write everything, even small research, you have to do some, some uh, you have to do some works and then also you write. For example, during uh, my adaptation, so, uh, I got nine prosthetic and then now, alhamdulillah, from 2019, I do not write anymore in our lab. We do not write anymore in the proceeding and then we move on to the article journal. So what did I, uh, what did I do during my uh, stay in uh, how to make ad ad adaptation in Indonesia? Because, you know, in our university, even in Indonesia, we have a limitation in the how to make a research, right? So some of the people, uh, we cannot do research uh, because of the limitation of the analysis or production process. That's why at that time we made our lab we, uh, with uh, me and our students. We made, for example, sunlight photoreactor, UV photoreactor, portable UV, high energy bowl meal, this meal, spray drying, cream, 
plant spray pyrolysis. We made it by ourselves and using our uh, equipment. That means we can we can say that homemade designed apparatus. So we, we made some uh, paper, for example, we do a research about low cost Arduino based spectrophotometer. We made spectrophotometer, it is published. It is to 2017, I think. That's so how we check the temperature of the effective of our spectrophotometer. And then also we check the economic evaluation. Dr. Nadianto. Okay. Uh, okay, 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 good, good. Yeah. Uh, thank you very much. Yeah, because I this directly unmute. I, I have no idea. Yeah, it is directly mute, so I cannot unmute. Okay, let's uh, I continue my research. So after I did uh, we did experiment on the effective spectrophotometer, and we also checked the economic evaluation, and after we get how to make a computation in the research, so we made for several types of materials uh, for the economic evaluation. It's a TA, technical component of analysis. And also we use our experiment that we, we did, we, we made by ourselves. For example, we used it for the, at the time, 9 March, 2016. 9 March, 2016, we got a partial solar eclipse. So we make, mm, we check how to make it, how to make the, how happen to the reaction during the solar eclipse. And also we use the same uh, catalyst. We made a catalyst, for example, we synthesize uh, tungsten trioxide, microparticles, and then for the catalytic activity. And also we check the micromechanical characteristic uh, of the catalyst that we made. And also beside that, as we know that Indonesia is one of the agriculture countries. That's why we also made experiments in taking and the extract, extract, make extraction of the silica and carbon from the rice straw. We also, after we, we directly uh, succeed in uh, taking silica, so we, we did, uh, we, we make uh, we made about uh, potassium silicate and particles from rice straw, and it's good for the fertilizer. And also we checked the mesopore uh, mesopore structure of the. I think this one is on, also same with the what is, uh, Pak Muslim yeah, Doctor uh, Professor Muslim yeah, and they also check the silica and then they check the absorption mechanism. What happened during the absorption mechanism? And also we check the porous carbon particles from the some agricultural waste and it is published. And also we use the high milling process uh, in controlling the, for example, the carbon particles. And then also from rice straw, we made using high ball energy ball mill. And then we control the particle size and also the pore size, how to make it possible for the adsorbent. Beside of the production of the carbon so we also uh, convert the produced carbon from the graphite into the graphene at the time i think 2018 2018 yeah and also we made a resin based break pad from agriculture waste that we found that the our resin break pad from the from the rice store is uh, is almost the same uh, with the commercial one commercial uh, commercial break pad that is commercially available also we made a uh, bioplastic so for from the synthesis mechanical properties and biodegradability 
we check using the cornstarch. So we use a cornstarch and then we combine it with the uh, with the glycerol and then also uh, we combine it and we found how the crack model happen and how the what the fungus fungus is mean that uh, like like the microbes like, like microorganism how the microorganism grow on the on the by for for degrade degrading of the the, the prepared bioplastic. Besides that, uh, now also we did experiment in the using a meta organic framework MOF. MOF we have, we did uh, several types of MOF for example MIL one hundred and then HKUST and then CUTPA and MF five and also we make a MIL. Uh, 100 and we control how to make the we find the mechanism the good mechanism how to control it from the uh, nanoparticle to my my uh, micro particle so into, into mof large particle beside that also we did a course analysis so as we did uh, some particles and the particles put and using a deep coating process and deep coating process we put it in the in the what is nitric acid, for example, yeah, then we check the condition. Also, uh, regarding the body coloring dye, also we, we did experiment. So, for example, from nat uh, natural products, so we put uh, body coloring dye and then we found how the body coloring dye from the natural product uh, insert the, the what is. Uh, Inside the clothes, yeah. And finally, we did experiment about the particle of our education. We have we published in several journal. I didn't put it. Uh, so, for example, we explained to the student how the particle solute um, into the solution, and then also the dilution process, and then what happened, and then we explain about to the children and then to the students, especially for the elementary student. So how the aerosol process during the COVID, the COVID virus, uh, and then also we explain about the the concept of the of the heating process, and also the concept of the Archimedes uh, Archimedes law using the egg, and finally we also check how to check the tidal effect of the solution when the solution contains uh, some particle with different sizes. Yeah. And it is uh, this is the final. So do not grieve when you are in the some condition, but use that condition as a as a facilitate as a facilitation for you to be more good, to be do your best, and do not complain and keep fighting, keep trying and keep your spirit. Uh, so if you are in, for example, when I came from the abroad from the Japan, so. It was very horrible time actually, and then because I have to make uh, adaptation, to make adaptation to make uh, because I cannot do research uh, in Indonesian condition because there is no good facility facility there is no good uh, analysis there is no good apparatus but Alhamdulillah with if we are fighting if we are keep our spirit and then. If there is something, uh, there is nothing. You can, from the scratch, from the scratch, you can make a new one that you can be adapt, make adaptation. Yeah. And then, thank you very much for your attention. Yeah. Okay. I come back to the moderator. Okay. Uh, thank you for the presentation, Dr. Nandianto. It gives us a compact and fair information about the particle technology for science, yeah. technology, economic, and education. Okay. We are moving on to the next agenda. The last presentation from Mr. Nanang Masrusin, PhD, from Biomaterial Research Center, Brin, with his presentation about development of nanocellular space material for drug release model application. Please allow me to read his CV. Dr. Masrusin is young researcher in the Research Center for Biomaterials National Research and Agency, or BRIN. He received his bachelor degree in chemical engineering at Universitas Diponegoro. 
and finished master degree in metallurgy and material engineering at Universitas Indonesia, and also complete his doctoral degree in wood science and technology department at Kim National University, Republic of Korea. His research interest focuses on the production of nanocellulose from lignocellulosic materials, especially non-wood resources. He had joined a collaboration with Toyota Motor Asia Pacific Incorporation from Thailand to develop low cost and lightweight polymer composite reinforced natural fibers. Dr. Nanang is very productive figure. He also published a number of papers and received several awards and honors, including Satya Lencana Karya Satya Sepuluh from President Republic of Indonesia in 2018. Okay, please welcome Dr. Nanang Masrusin. Good uh, afternoon, Dr. Nanang. Uh, you are still mute. Okay, thank you. Good afternoon. It's almost uh, good noon. afternoon. Yeah. Okay, thank you, Mr. Moderator. Mrs. Oh. <laughs> Bukan Mr. Okay. My oh. I remind you Sorry. that you have 30 minutes to present. So uh, okay. please the time is yours. Okay, thank you very much, Mrs. Moderator. Sorry. Uh, so uh, now it's eleven eight, so I have to finish at eleven thirty eight. Thank you, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, good after, uh, good, good, uh, good morning. Yeah, actually, uh, my name is Nanang Masruchin. As introducing by the moderators, I come from uh, National Research and Institute of, uh, Agency, Green. Uh, it's changing from Libby to Green nowadays. And then, uh, first of all, I would like to uh, acknowledge to the committee that inviting me. Uh, to this uh, wonderful conference. And then a second, I would like to uh, congratulate to vocational uh, school, uh, Diponegoro University uh, for the fifth uh, Natalis. I hope that uh, in the future, good luck for the future. And then uh, for the prosperous uh, future, I would like to be a success for you. And then uh, the third, uh, the topic for the conference, I would like to share my, uh, please allow me to uh, share. Okay, uh, it is on. Still loading. Okay, uh, please wait. Uh, for the topic, for the conference, conference is designing tomorrow towards sustainable engineering and technology. Uh, how about my screen? Is still on? No. Uh, not yet. Mm -hmm. Oh my God! What happened here? Oh my God, what happened here? Wait a minute. It's okay. Mm -hmm. Oh my God, my computer is hanging. Oh my God. Okay, Dr. Nana, maybe you can send your uh, materials to our comedy. Yeah, sure, but my computer is hanging. Okay. <laughs> yeah, okay.
Yes, yeah, sometimes it's happened. Okay, no problem, doctor. Take your time. Mm -hmm. Oh my God, I should send the, my. Okay, uh, there is a technical error from Dr. Nana uh, device. Maybe uh, can we fill in the attendance? You can uh, see in the chat room. For all participants, please fill the attendance, uh, attendance form by this link below.
Okay, while we are waiting for uh, Dr. Nana, maybe for the participant who has question to Dr. Um, Nandi and Dr. Toku, you can prepare it and maybe you can drop in the chat box and I will read it in the Q&A session. Thank you. Okay, uh, we jump to the Q&A session, yeah. I would like to explain about the Q&A session. Uh, the role of this session is for every participant to click the raise hand icon. If you want to ask a question, please measure your name and state to which presenter you address your question. I will call you by name and you can deliver your question by yourself once I acknowledge you. Or just simply drop your question in chat box and I will read it for you. So. Any question, please? For Dr. Uh, Tuku and Dr. Nadianto. We have a um, question in the chat box. Maybe Dr. Tuku and Dr. Nandi. Are you still here? We have a number of questions of Dr. Toku. Uh, Dr. Toku? Okay, welcome back, Dr. Toku. We have uh, three questions for you in the chat box okay okay should so i read it for you interest with uh, our research i think with banana kepok <laughs> okay hopefully okay. Uh, our research can uh, uh, interest for anyone in this uh, conference to make a uh, pla from pisang kepok <laughs> oh, very interesting, doctor. Okay, uh, should I read it for you, or maybe you uh, read by yourself in the chat box? Hello. Okay, from Ria Tasmalia. Assalamualaikum. Uh, good morning, Dr. Toku. I'm Ria Tasmalia from Vocational School Universitas Diponegoro. Uh, Dr. Toku, hmm. since uh, polylactic acid will apply as bioscaffold, how long is this lifetime to against its degradation? Thank you in advance, Dr. Toku. Okay. I think the question same with uh, Fitria Arifina. Uh, yeah, yeah, betul. Yes. Yes, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Aria Tasmalia and... I, I direct the answer to the question. Of course, Ms. please. Refiary? Yes, of course, please. Okay, thank you. Uh, Miss, uh, 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 Miss Ria Tasmalia and Fitria Arifina. Uh, this is uh, the beginning of our research. Uh, in laboratory, uh, we already uh, uh, prepare the material. How long is uh, uh, how long time? Eh? Time uh, the material will be degradation. Uh, we got the results uh, until now. Until now, because the uh, investigation uh, will be continue in the future. Uh, 
in the future uh, we want to continue this uh, research uh, one years one years uh, uh, the material can defend the, the uh, uh, attack from the uh, de degradation degradation because degradation will be can uh, with the attack of uh, micro uh, micro micro uh, bacteria bacteria uh, uh, we call the bacteria uh, if uh, chitosan uh, empty the uh, in the material will be uh, PLA can be uh, attacked from the bacteria maybe in uh one years uh, we can uh, defend uh, the attack from the bacteria okay. Uh, okay about a year yeah dr yeah. toko depends on bacteria bacteria yeah. okay yes, okay is it answer your question fitria and ria i think it's clear enough okay uh one question from ismail hasan to both speakers uh, okay first for dr Doku. dear speakers that were such a great presentation of your research considering a good research outcome requires a suggestion a suggestion for further research would you please give us suggestion about further research regarding each of your previous topic okay Oh, who answer this question? I am uh, or another. Both of you. Huh? Uh, all the all the speakers, all the presenter, Doctor okay. Toku and Doctor Ganti. Doctor Toku first. I am first. Okay. <laughs> this is a, a very interesting uh, question about the suggestion, the food research. I think uh, research uh, is our uh, style. Uh, for me, for me, for me, our style. I like uh, research about bio degradation. Maybe uh, another researcher not like uh, like this. Uh, uh, before I presentation, we hear about. Uh, Pak Hadi, Prof uh, Abrar, they are uh, interested in their fail. Okay, uh, in uh, in our research, uh, I, I want to produce the material uh, will be uh, or uh, can be bio degradation. That why. Uh, we focus uh, to produce the PLA, we produce the uh, chitosan, and we produce the uh, filler filler uh, to increase the properties of that material. I think uh, depend on you, uh, depend on you, you want to uh research about what uh, if you like about the environmental maybe you can uh, uh, read uh, the paper uh, from environmental if you like uh, uh, research about biodegradation maybe you can uh, uh, call me <laughs> we can share about the uh, uh, research. I think that's my question. Okay, thank you, Dr. Teoku. Uh, we move to Dr. Nandianto for answer the same question. Thank you very much for the okay. um, very good question, actually, this moment. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, clearly. Okay, okay, thank you. Okay, the question is uh, about what is the, the I mean, um, let me read. 
Would you please give a suggestion about further research regarding each of your previous topics? So especially our future work, do you mean, right? Further is mean future work. So indeed, yeah. in, our, uh, in our lab, our future work, we want to make indeed, uh, to make uh, everything possible, right? For example, from Indonesia. So we want to reduce about the, the import. For example, the brake pad, for example. Brake pad is our latest, latest um, research. So especially brake pad, usually we import from the other countries. So we can make it possible sustained by ourselves. We can produce our, ourselves, for example. So also catalyst, also adsorbent, also everything from our Indonesian uh, natural because Indonesian is a very rich country. We can produce by ourselves actually, right? That one the, the main idea. Why uh, in our research we focus on the mainly to the agriculture waste, for example. Yeah, okay, that's one. I hope it is uh, it is good. Okay. How do you think? Uh, thank you very much for the answer, hmm. uh, Mr. Ismail Hassan. Is it clear? Okay, thank you very much for the very compact and clear uh, answer from Dr. Nadianto and Dr. Teuku. We move to ne the next question. Uh, I have a participant who raised hand, Shaika. Okay, uh, please mention your name and state to which presenter you address your question. Okay, Shaika, you still not? Okay, thank you. Thanks for this chance. Um, hello, good afternoon, Ms. Previa. Good afternoon, Dr. Tengku, Dr. Nandianto, and Dr. Hana. Um, I am Kiyanga Butsaina from Vocational School, Dipon Gura University. I have a question to Dr. Tengku. Um, so I would like to ask about the thermal stability of some curcumin in the plan in the plan Mm, is there any data show this parameter in your research? Yes, I think that is a question from me. Thank you very much for this time. Okay, for Dr. Teoku. Is it clear, the question from Shaika? <laughs> Dr. Teoku. Okay, maybe you can... Um, Eka, can you repeat your question? Oh, Dr. Nanang, uh, welcome back. Wait for uh, a moment, Dr. Nanang, we're still in a Q&A session. Thank you. Eka, can you repeat your question to Dr. Teoku? Shaika? Yes, um, yeah, sorry. okay. Yes, uh, so I can, I can just uh, unmute. Okay. So I, so I okay. just Thank you. my question. I can unmute uh, with myself. Uh, uh, okay, thank you uh, to unmute me. Uh, oh. What the question? Uh, question for Dr. Asep, maybe? No, for you, no. Dr. Teoku, about PLA. Okay. Mm -hmm. What the question? Uh, I can hear the question uh, clearly. Can you... Kamari, uh, uh, please unmute Saika. Participant. Uh, yeah, okay. Can uh, repeat yes, I the can. question for me? Yes. Yes, I, I will repeat. I'm sorry, I, I just answered because I just can to unmute myself. So my question is, uh, I would like to ask about the thermal stability of set and curcumin in the nanotitoson. Is there any data show this parameter in your research, Dr. Tempo? Okay. I think that is my question. Is it clear or I need to repeat it once more? I want to in, uh, I want to disper 
my slide presentation. Yes. I want show ya. Yeah. You want I show the my slide ya? Yeah. Okay. I will show the slide. Okay. What the question? Okay, my question is about the thermal stability of sanker coming in the plan and there is okay. is there is there any data show this parameter in your research oh yes uh, uh, in this uh, conference we, we not uh, show the data of uh, thermal characterization because uh, I want to prepare the data of uh, thermal characterization uh, for the journal. Uh, for the conference, I just uh, show uh, three, uh, uh, three uh, parameter of the testing, like uh, tensile strength, and then uh, FTER analysis, and then uh, same analysis. Uh, for uh, thermal characterization, uh, I keep the information for the journal. Oh, I see. Maybe yes, I see. Uh, Miss uh, Saika, can I call you Miss Saika? Um, basically, I am a participant, so I am still college student. But okay. okay so. uh, you, Mrs. or Miss? Miss. <laughs> oh, Miss. Uh, I call you Miss, <laughs> not Mrs. Yeah. Okay, Miss uh, Saika. Uh, maybe you can uh, uh, you can call me or WhatsApp me uh, directly. Uh, to uh, I, I can share the data of uh, TGA for you. Yes. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much, Doctor. Thank Tengu you for the amazing answer. Uh, okay, you. Shaika. Shaika, you can con uh, contact Doctor Toku privately, yeah. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Hello. Hello. Thank can you. you can you hear us? Can you hear me? Hello. Yeah. Ah, okay. I think Saika, do you do you need the data for the curcumin thermal decomposition? Hello, Saika. Hello. Yeah, Dr. Nandi. Yeah. Ah, yeah. Uh, it is for Dr. Tungku or uh, Dr. Teku or me for the uh, curcumin particles. We okay, also did experiment. Your patient uh, addressed to Dr. Toku or also Dr. Nandi? Um, I I have a question about the first presentation, so it is directly to okay, okay. Dr. Toku. But, but oh, okay, if you need the data, I have published one article about the carbon particles. Yeah, if you need, I can share to you, okay, to the link last oh, time yes. about oh, the temperature, okay. yeah. Because we did also curcumin and then also we made it for the food for athletes. So if you want, yeah. My name okay. This one. Thanks. Okay. You can, in the uh, chat, you can check and then you can uh, download it. It is a uh, uh, full information about the thermal decomposition of curcumin and dried turmeric. And then you can check how the curcumin, uh, how the deco thermal decomposition. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Wow, thank Clear. you very much, Dr. Nanji thank and Dr. Toku. Um, Saika, you get more answer than you expect, yeah? Okay, thank you very much. You. Now, uh, still there any question, but hold on. We uh, will back to Dr. Nanang. Dr. Nanang. Yeah, okay, sorry. Uh -huh. Okay. Okay, can we continue? Yes, of course. Okay, wait a minute. Uh, that's my presentation already on screen. 
Yes. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. So it's on screen now, right? Yeah, thank you very much. And then, sorry for the inconvenience. Uh, I had prepared everything well, but suddenly, you know, sometimes it's happened during live sessions. Okay, uh, this is my talk today. Uh, the topic is actually quite related to the theme that uh, a community had uh, choose for their uh, conference, Designing Tomorrow to a Sustainable Engineering and also Technology. In this case, I focus on a nanocellular study that actually cellulose come from lignocellulosic materials that it is sustainable and also renewable. In this talk, I would like to talk about the application for the drug, drug, drug release models. So the outline of my study today is about the nanocellulose background, understanding about the wood, and then also non-wood lignocellulosic byproduct, and also how the nanocellulose is prepared and also the eco-technology concept that we are developed in a uh, research center for biomaterials brain and also the nanocellulose properties, quite small talk. And then followed by the nanocomposite cellulose hydrogel applications for the drug release model. And then uh, also in the form of the polymer composite and also small uh, discussion about the nanocellulose toxicity because of the application is for uh, medic biomedical. So so that's why we are have, uh, have to know about the application, uh, about the toxicity. And then for the, the goals of the study is uh, from the stock, audience could have different perspective about the utilization of a lignocellulosic source for producing new advanced material, for example, for biomedical composite, for example, for lightweight materials, electronic devices, and also another functional materials. And the second, curious about the application of nanocellulose and then understanding about the eco technology concept uh, based on the topic of this conference. So the, for the background uh, nanocellulose, we are trying to understand about the wood. Uh, I collected uh, a figure from the National Geographic from the cover. Uh, it shows that in 2012, and also in uh, 2009, they make uh, 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 head topics. Uh, uh, the name is uh, the tallest tree and also the world largest tree. Uh, his name is Redwood. Uh, it's almost 200 years old and uh, they have a tall about 115 meters. Uh, they are not actually a living uh, organism, but it's also a, an ecosystem uh, so because of their uh, many birds and then bugs or insects or other fungi and other that are living in, in, in wood. And this is our professor from uh, Kyoto University. Uh, he has awarded for uh, the 37 Honda Prize winner in 2016 because uh, he made uh, nanocellulose by mechanical uh, treatment. Uh, I, I studied a lot from, from him. Uh, he studied about the philosophy why he's studying a nanocellulose and he he told me that uh, he want to know the soul of the tree because he believed that uh, a tree is not just living but it's also they have a soul uh, and then uh, for example he think that the the wood it's not only for being a tax or a chair or a bench or other drawers or something like that they have a meaning or they they have a purpose for their life for example, so that's why he isolated the nanocellulose and then converted it into the new advanced material for the application. For example, in his case, he made a polymer composite uh, nanocellulose. And the other study from Susan Simat from UPC uh, University British Canada, he said that the trees actually communicated each other. So that's why he launched a book, Finding the Mother Tree, Discovering the Wisdom of the Forest. Because actually underneath our, underneath the uh, surface, actually the wood is interconnected each other using a uh, fungi or hyphae uh, interconnection. So that's why they can share information, they can share uh, nutrition and others. So that's why it's quite Im uh, amazing actually uh, studying about the wood. And you can see the illustration in here. Uh, you can see that the picture in here is uh, comparing between the human. Uh, we are only two meters tall and compared to the redwood, it's almost 130, uh, 115, 
compared to the Liberty Statue and Big Ben uh, Tower, it's uh, lower than the redwood. Then uh, interestingly also that the wood is not only strong, but it's also smart. For example, we have a study about the concept of lightweight concepts, self-control materials, and also self-cleaning concept uh, for making a super hydrophobic material from uh, nano nanocellulose. So in here, the term of nanocellulose actually is quite different with the cellulose. In case of cellulose, cellulose is dissolving in some of sol uh, solvent, but in case of the nanocellulose, it's, uh, it cannot be dissolved in, uh, in a common solvent. So that's where we have to find a proper uh, solvent for the dissolution of nanocellulose. And then uh, it's comparing between the mechanical properties of wood, uh, pulp fiber, and nanocellulose. It's also interesting that uh, by decreasing the size of the materials from wood, uh, we obtain uh, increase in uh, the mechanical properties 10 times. For example, uh, when it's in the form of wood, uh, the modulus uh, and also tensile strength is about 10. Uh, GPA, but in the, in the form of crystalline structure is multiplied by 10, it's almost 130 to uh, 250 gigapascal. And then compared to the other uh, materials, for example, the natural and also engineering, you can see uh, the uh, cellulose is, has a high tensile strength and also high modulus. So that's why it is uh, very interesting to use in a composite materials or in other uh, applications. This is the wood uh, anatomy. You can see in here that the wood is consists of many uh, cells and then the cell is consists of a wood shell. And then the wood cell itself, it's actually a composite of laminated that uh, has a different orientations, for example. So that's why it makes uh, the wood, it's quite strong and also uh, uh, flexible. And then this is the topic. Actually, there are a different era from stone. And nowadays, we are in a biopolymer that actually can be harvested from a wood. Uh, this is, uh, for example, the applications uh, in uh, Tokyo. Nowadays, there are Sumitomo forestry that a 350 meter skyscraper made from uh, wood construction. Uh, and then also, uh, 2020 Olympic, uh, we, uh, Hiro Yukiyano has launched. Uh, Toyota Setsuna that uh, some of the parts is, is contained of a composite material from nanocellulose. And then from the non-wood lignocellulosic byproduct, actually we can also harvest the cellulose, for example, from palm oil empty fruit branch and rice straw, and then uh, cocoa cell, and then uh, spun coffee grounds and also silver skin coffee brine. This all materials is actually abundant in, uh, in our country. So that's why uh, we need to focus on how to produce nanocellulose for the uh, advanced materials. This is how the, the nanocellulose prepared. For example, we have two different uh, category to produce it. For example, you, uh, uncharged nanocellulose and also charged cellulose. Uh, you, when it's uncharged cellulose, we use mechanical disintegrations, for example, uh, using homogenization, grinding, refining, and etc. And then for the charge, we can use a cationic and anionic surface modification, for example, using sulfuric acid, carboxymethylation, carboxylated group onto the surface of the cellulose. So that's why it can easy to defibrillate the cellulose uh, into the nanocellulose, into the nanocellulose. And there are two, uh, two groups, uh, big groups in our uh, earth, there are uh, European in continents, they usually made uh, uh, cellulose nanofibers, but in uh, American continent, usually they use a cellulose nanocrystal. What makes different between the cellulose nanofiber and also cellulose nanocrystal? Uh, we, we have illustrated that when it's uh, the same, for example, a cellulose is, uh, actually cellulose is a carbohydrate, but when we talk about the carbohydrates, uh, we, when, we, when it is in a cellulose nanofiber, it looks like a spaghetti-like, but in, uh, in, when we talk about the cellulose nanocrystal, it looks like a rice-like. So uh, there are uh, thinner and longer in uh, cellulose nanofiber, but in cellulose nanocrystal, there are uh, needle-like uh, morphology. And then there are some nanocellulose research group in the what you can see in the, in the, in the, in the slide. And then the, the, the difference between uncharged and negative charge, you can see in, in the slide that 
uh, and charge uh, cell nano cellulose is quite opaque and then the negative charge cellulose is quite translucent or transparent because uh, the size of the uh, the nano cellulose is quite low below the fishable like uh, wave number for, for example uh, below the 300 nanometers so that's why it's become uh, transparent so this is the concept that we are developing in our uh, laboratory you can visit us in uh, elsa.lipi.id for uh, accessing our uh, equipment. Uh, it is, uh, you can see, uh, we, if you are collaborate, we can uh, access it for free. Uh, the eco-technology concept actually that we are developing is based on how we reduce the uh, CO2 emission and also to develop a low carbon uh, technology. In here, we are uh, converting uh, wood into nanocellulose with a high yield and then low cost material, eco-friendly, and also uh, one-step processing using a uh, catalyst as well. And then uh, the difference of nanocellulose properties uh, compared to uh, carbon uh, nanotube in here, uh, some of literature say that uh, it is 550 to 10, uh, 100 uh, until 10, uh, 1000 uh, lower uh, in energy compared to uh, uh, carbon nanotube, but the uh, tensile strength is just 10% uh, of uh, carbon nanotube. Uh, interestingly, the mechanical properties can be increased when we use a cellulose as reinforcement because of the percolated system mechanism uh, that it is not happen in a uh, carbon nanotube. And this is the another sources uh, for from non-wood non, non, non uh, Sources, for example, you can make a nanocellular from cotton, rami, sugar beet, and also tunicate, and also an algae, uh, and also a, from a bacterial cellulose. Uh, when we have a different method and different resources, you can uh, obtain a different aspect ratio for the nanocellular productions. The higher uh, aspect ratio, so it can uh, obtain uh, the lower uh, amount of nanocrystalline that you are uh, added to the composites. And then this is the uh, material, the topic about the nanocellulose uh, composite hydrogels that I made from a uh, hardwood, hardwood bleach craft bulb uh, using a tempo oxidation. And I obtained a nanocellulose uh, with diameters about seven nanometers. And then uh, we make the hydrogel using uh, 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 cationization using different uh, fallen of uh, cation, for example, using aluminum, uh, calcium, and also proton. After we obtain the hydrogel, we load uh, the drug model. For example, in here, I using uh, theophylline and also methylene blue. And then uh, we started the release of the uh, drug model uh, with the difference uh, time using a spectroscopy and a difference uh, model uh, equations. And we obtain that uh, by different, in here we, we can, uh, we, we see that uh, a different amount of uh, aluminum additions and also uh, different cation, it shows that the higher interconnection between uh, cellulose uh, because of the presence of the aluminum, uh, it can reduce the amount of the drug, uh, uh, drug release from the hydrogels. And then using a kinetic drug release study, it shows that the Hikochi model is fit uh, with the mechanism of the uh, release of the theophylline from the cellulose hydrogels. And then uh, after that, we are making uh, responsive composite hydrogels. Uh, the key word is actually uh, different uh, amounts. For example, you can manage uh, ionic strength, glucose, uh, and then magnetic or light, uh, but in our study, we use a temperature and also a different pH. So that's why we obtain a temperature and pH uh, responsive hydrogel. We are combining uh, between two uh, actual between two components, which is a, a thermoresponsive uh, polymer using a polynipam, and then uh, also. Uh, reinforce it with uh, cellulose nanofibers that obtain it with a uh, negative surface start uh, with a carboxylate group on the surface. And then the, actually the mechanism is quite uh, simple. When we have the pH, it's below the pKa, so the materials will be shrink. But after uh, the pH is above the pKa, the, the hydrogel will be swollen. And also the same mechanism uh, using the 
uh, polynipam, when it is low, below the low critical solution temperature, it will be uh, shrinking, but in above, uh, uh, sorry, uh, when it's uh, below the LCSC, it will be swollen, but uh, it is above the LCSC, it's around 37. Uh, it's almost close to a human body temperature, so it will be shrinks. So uh, when it's swollen and shrinks, the drug content in the uh, material will be released. This is the example uh, of the hydrogel that we are producing in our lab. Uh, you can see that uh, it's can swollen uh, from a diameter about 18 to, to uh, almost uh, 18 millimeters. And then this is the uh, characteristic of the polymer composite hydrogel using different loading of cellulose nanofibers. You can see in here that the water retention after the adding of nanocellulose is uh, quite high. It's almost uh, close to uh, 10 uh, percent. And then, uh, and also the mechanism is quite different when the radical polymerization was occurred on quite low temperature. In here, we are studied at uh, minus 20 degrees Celsius. And it shows that at minus 20 degrees Celsius, it's also shown that the water retention uh, drastically decreased uh, compared to the neat uh, polynipum. And also the uh, LCSD shows that it's all, uh, around 33, uh, actually, yeah, 33 degrees Celsius. And also we are studying uh, the pH dependency and also the positive temperature at different uh, temperature and also different uh, pH. It shows that the, our hydrogel is a pH responsive and also actually it has a temperature responsive as well, but it's uh, after it's 20 days, uh, the temperature, the condition of the hydrogel is uh, quite flat. And then uh, for the cumulative release, we also study it uh, using different temperature and also different pH, it shows that the, how the hydrogel is produced, it's uh, in, uh, influenced the characteristic of the cumulative uh, of the drug. And besides that, we also can attach, uh, for example, like uh, uh, some uh, amino acid and also bovine serum albumin or uh, dyes into the surface of the cellulose after functionalization for here, we applied uh, amine groups, so it's more uh, reactive so that we can make uh, like a drug or put it in delivery. And others, we also make a biosensing you, by uh, attaching uh, activated promocrystal greens to make a uh, film that can uh, responsive to different pH. For the biomedical application, actually, you, you can search in, using a keyword, for example, like for wound dressing, medical textile, uh, dental ceramic, uh, and also an another, uh, for example, a biomakers, for biomakers. And lastly, I would like to talk about the nanocellulose toxicity. Uh, this is a study from Harper in 2016. It shows that uh, Modification of nanocellulose using a carboxylated group or a sulfonylated group actually did not influence the toxicity of the uh, uh, nanocellulose. So it's quite safe uh, for uh, human living. And it's also another study. It shows that uh, carboxylated and sulfur uh, cellulose nanocrystal, it's also below the AZ metric uh, uh, equations. So for the conclusions, uh, we from wood, we learn how they become tough and what makes them uh, strong. Uh, then by eco-technology concept, isolation of nanocellulose, we can mimic and manipulate them into a new sustainable advanced materials. Cellulose is a renewable resource with many potential applications in the future. Uh, we have a Rencana Pembangunan Industri Nasional, uh, 2015 until 2035, and it state that uh, nanocellulose derivative will be a major concern uh, on that uh, stage. So uh, don't hesitate, visit us in uh, Biometrial Lipidot Code ID, our website. We have a Pusat Kajian Nanocellulose, and so let us collaborate. Thank you for your listening. Back okay. to the moderator. 
Yeah. yeah. Thank you, Dr. Nanang, for the very informative yep. and interesting presentation about development of nanocellulose based materials for mm -hmm. drug release model application. Unfortunately, we only have a little time to, to discuss mm -hmm. it, Dr. Sorry, okay. Sorry. It's okay. Okay, we will back uh, to, uh, we will continue our QA session. We already have two questions in chat box. Okay, I will read it for um, for the presenters. Okay, from Ibu uh, Sri, dear uh, Dr. Asep, I'm sorry, maybe my question is not related to the research, but also tip, but about tips and tricks, how to make a laboratories productive in scientific publication if the students are vocational students who are most focused on working skill. Dr. Nani, are you still with us? Uh, Dr. Nani Yanto? Okay, maybe uh, we move to the next question to Dr. Tuku again. Let me introduce myself. My name is okay, okay Dr. Asep. Okay, okay, okay. okay, okay. Uh, <laughs> I'm very sorry. Oh. Many technical error now. I have no idea why I cannot speak here, yeah, even it is unmute. Okay, for the Busri Utami. Okay, how to make laboratory productive in scientific publication? There are no problem with the vocational. Uh, student vocational student who are focus focus on the work is there no problem there are no problems okay uh, because in UPI we are in education so education it means that um I think you can take from the working skill I mean you can take from the school because you are vocational usually related to the practicum right you can take any data and then you can write it and then you can select the article from the journal that are published that are focused on the on publishing the education related uh, topics yeah i think it is better right because in upi in my lab also uh, half of my paper are in uh, in education i think you can check my google scholar the simplest way so you can check one by one and then yeah inshallah you can get it yeah no worries Okay, uh, Musri Utami, is it answer your question? I think, it, uh, I think it's clear enough, uh, the answer from Dr. Nandianto. Thank you so much. And this is a question uh, for Dr. Teukuri Hayat from Indah Rizki Diyanisa. I want to ask you about what factor that influence the release of zinc curcumin from the PLA nanoketoser metric materials. Thank you. Okay, please unmute Dr. Tilku. Kabri. Ah, uh, thank you. Uh, Miss uh, Prefiari. Uh, I want to answer the question uh maybe uh we need the correct uh, a little the question about uh factor that influence to release maybe uh, education is uh, not uh, uh release maybe maybe uh, uh factor to insert uh, or or feel feel uh, because uh, Gen N curcumin uh, as a filler in this uh, section, PLA and nanocytosan as a metric. Uh, how to insert, how to fill the uh, Gen N curcumin uh, form, uh, form in the powder form? Uh, to the PLA or nanocytosan as a metric. Uh, there are uh, a few of uh, factors 
uh, lack uh, the material need compatibility compatibility uh, between uh, filler and metric uh, that why we need to prepare prepare before uh, we insert the uh, filler to metric uh, in this uh, investigation uh, we adding with uh, some chemical uh, to make uh, gen and curcumin intercalate intercalate to PLA uh, nano -chitosan. another factor uh, I think we need to uh, uh, see about the temperature temperature not uh not a uh, high temperature because if high temperature uh, will be the make the uh, curcumin uh, curcumin come from the uh, plant uh, kunyit i think um, another factor uh, we need to see about the uh, uh, Temperature uh, tekanan pressure pressure I think uh, temperature and pressure uh, I think that's uh, my question. Okay, thank you so much for the answer, uh, Doctor Teuku. Is it uh, clear enough? So indah Rizky Dwiyanisa. Okay, thank you so much. We move to the next question. Uh, the question is for Dr. Nanang. Yeah, from Fitra Chemical Engineering. Thank you for your interesting presentation. Is the toxicity for one application is really safe when the cellulose is expected to degrade in the bloodstream? Okay, please unmute, Doctor. Okay, uh, thank you, thank you already. Okay. Yeah, uh, thank you for the question, uh, Abu Bakar Novitra. It's quite uh, interesting questions. Uh, actually, uh, now until now, uh, I'm not studying about the cytotoxicity, but nowadays I'm uh, starting to study about the cytotoxicity. I'm using a blood, uh, blood cell and also fibroblast. I just incubated uh, one and three days and then it, the cell nowadays is growing. And then uh, I just start to uh, what is called uh, to check the cytotoxicity and also biocompatibility of the cellulose. And then the question is that when it is the cellulose can be degraded and then, then it, it is uh, uh, entering our bloodstream. That's the question actually, right? Uh, the cellulose itself actually uh, used for uh, topical applications. So uh, in this case, usually it's on a film uh, morphology, uh, film uh, condition. When we make the film, actually the cellulose will be interconnected or uh, cross-linking with uh, a polymer or another. So that's why it's not in the form of a cellulose itself. Actually, the cellulose it's not uh, dis dissolved uh, in uh, in a solvent, for example. In here, in this case, is uh, the 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 blood, for example, like that. So, uh, in my opinion, uh, the de degradation can be uh, uh, cannot be occur when we use it for topical application because it look like uh, what we call it Hansa plus. Uh, the in, in Indonesia we call it the Hansa plus. Uh, usually, it's not uh, uh, longer contact with uh, the wound, and then uh, actually we also can make uh, the film uh, with uh, addition of, uh, for example, like. Uh, antioxidant or something that uh, have uh, antimicrobial activity. So that's why uh, the wound itself it can quickly to uh, uh, what we call it uh, uh, cure, cure, uh, cure uh, effectively. So maybe that's uh, my uh, answer. I hope that uh, answering your question. Okay, thank you very much, Dr. Nanang for the answer. 
Okay, we have the last question for uh, this session to Dr. Nanang from uh, Mr. Amazon Azizan from University Technology Mara, Malaysia. Should I read it for you or maybe you can read by yourself, okay. Dr. Nanang? Mm -hmm. Because it's I will uh, by myself. complicated. Okay, thank okay. you. Uh -huh. This is uh, the question from uh, uh, Amazon Azizan. Uh, from University Technology Mara, thank you for the questions. So for the first question, uh, have I have invented or studied about the application for nanocomposite applications? Until now, it's not yet, but uh, there are some applications, for example, making um, thin membranes uh, that can uh, hinder the penetration of the virus into, uh, uh, into that membrane. That actually uh, the technology is just uh, like uh, how we make uh, the uh, cellulose uh, interconnected each other. So that's why the porous uh, become smaller, but actually it's uh, uh, not smaller than the diameter of the virus itself. But that's uh, nowadays uh, uh, having a study about how we make a thin membrane for uh, like uh, mass. And then the second question is, what is your opinion about the nanocellular effectiveness for composite using uh, the nanos from uh, bacteria uh, or from lignocellulosic biomass. Okay, this is the actually the interesting uh, topic, uh, how we uh, choose the source for the production of nanocellulose. When we use a bacterial cellulose for the production of nanocellulose, actually we, we did not to uh, degrade another non-cellulose compound, for example, like lignin and also hemicellulose. But the size of the cellulose that make from the uh, uh, bacterial cellulose is quite bigger compared to the nanocellulose that extracted from wood biomass. That's happened because of uh, it's quite difficult. Uh, it it uh, it's depend on actually it depends on the surface modification that we applied to the uh, the the cellulose. For example, when you use a tempo oxidations, you can make the cellulose become a negative surface charge, and then it we have, we will have electrostatic repulsion, so that we can obtain really thinner uh, cellulose compared to a bacterial cellulose that actually quite bigger uh, in uh, in in the size. So when and when it is uh, more smaller, you you will have a high surface area, and then you can add more drug or uh, it's become more uh, what we call it uh, zero defect. So you will obtain a high modulus of uh, nanocellulose. That's actually my, uh, my answer. I hope it's uh, uh, answered the question. And then, uh, yes, I will, we will have a collaboration in the future. Uh, I will happy for that. Okay, thank you. I'm so sorry, uh, the question from Dr. Amazon Azizan, Mrs. Amazon oh, okay. Azizan. I'm so sorry. Oh, sorry. <laughs> yeah, thank you very much for the question and of course for the answer from Dr. Nana. Yep. Uh, is it uh, the answer you, your question, Dr. Amazon? Okay. Okay. There is marking the end of our Q&A session today. It means we have arrived at the end of the session. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, before we close this agenda, on behalf of the committee, I would like to deliver a virtual certificate of appreciation for our honorable speakers. Okay, thank you. Okay. Okay. Once again, thank you, our honorable speaker, Dr. Teukuri Hayat, Dr. Nandianto, and Dr. Nanang. Thank you very much for sharing your knowledge and experiences. Thank you for being so vibrant for today's event. Hopefully, the presentation will be beneficial for everybody. Maybe before we uh, end uh, this agenda, can we take a picture together with the all participants? Please. Open your camera. Okay, for the comedy, uh, could you help me please to capture this moment?
Okay. What? Who will take the picture? Somebody, yeah? Okay. One, two, three. Smile. Okay, Dr. Uh, Dr. Nadianto. Can you uh, on your camera? I used to devices, yeah. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> Because okay. I found okay. Once more, one, two, three. Okay. Okay. Thank you uh, so much. I think uh, that's all for the special sharing session today. Thank you for all the wonderful participants, our analog speakers, and the in charge comedy. I am Previari Wipramesti. Thank you for your attention. Have a nice day, everyone. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you for the moderator and sharing speakers. Now let's move on to the lunch break. Participants will be able to take a break. The conference will resume at 1 p.m. We will be greatly appreciated if participants on time. Thank you. the knowledge, but also the actualization space.